welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. And now time to get into this. We have uh, Fitz Dogs on the way. And um, you ready, Gene? Woo! Ready to have some fun? Ready. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Pay attention. I'm paying attention. Better turn that ring off. I can't because I'm waiting for a very important phone call. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Hey, She's retarded. She's retarded. <laughs> My best do it. She's retarded. She's retarded. I told you Tim, go start it. She's retarded. This is Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother to this. Yo, mom, where the fuck is that? Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. With Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pajitsin. Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. She's retarded. Oh my Is that God. how you feel when we're out in public? And you and I'm embarrassing you and you uh, want to tell people that? She's retarded. <laughs> yeah. This is a, it's not like a, where is this? A, a, they're on a bus. She's retarded. And I think it's the boyfriend of a lady who's acting out. And the bus driver asks them to get off the bus and they refuse. Yeah. The cops are right there. She spits on one of them. Oh dear. So then they kind of like, you know, push her back onto the bus to arrest her. And that's when the guy's <laughs> like, don't, she's retarded. She doesn't know what she's doing. And then somebody, some pc -er on the on the bus goes, it's mentally disabled. Yeah, yeah. I think it might even be one of the, here, let's watch it from the beginning. So here she is. And they're like, let's go, go. I have to take this. See, okay. There you go. There's Christina just leaving during our show. Okay. That's a fun new way to do this program. Who cares about the co-host? I'll just and then I can I can hear her through there. That's awesome. You good? It's the wrong number. Oh, great, great. If you want to join the show, that was, that would help. <laughs> well, you know what call I'm waiting for. I don't know what call you're waiting for. Oh, really? No. Remember when I what the appointment I went to right before this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you didn't tell me that's the call you're waiting for. Oh, yeah. That's the oh. call I'm waiting for. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So here's the lady. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> She just spit towards a cop. I think he's retarded too. Is he retarded? That is too? a good way to get out of behavior that's not acceptable, you know? That, like, that's I'm retarded. Doing. Yeah, yeah. Can you say I'm retarded? That's another one you should try. Well, that's the but problem. But if you ever do anything for sure from now on in public that's not socially acceptable, I'm going to go, she's retarded. She's retarded. She's retarded. She's retarded. She's retarded. Please don't do it. Yeah, yeah, the PC or has to. The word is developmentally yeah. disabled. Yeah. The the PC a, police has to fucking the PC school police the police is on the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think they did that. I think well, they rode the bus. I mean, the guy who's saying she's retarded is her boyfriend, caregiver, yeah, whoever, yeah, yeah. who's close to her. And yeah. he's not troubled by the word. She's so. certainly not disputing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not like, I'm not retarded. <laughs> I'm mentally disabled. Holy shit. She's crying. She sounds retarded. She's not mentally disabled. Oh, She's wow. retarded. There, somebody uh, really gets upset about it. There is that Ooh. the cop? Is that one of the other cops? Listen. 
He gets really upset. See, don't say the word retarded. And then he's like, no, no, she's retarded. Yeah, no, she is retarded. <laughs> if you knew her, you'd know how, how retarded I'm with she her is. all the time. She's 24-7 retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you were going to like <laughs> Ah, that made my day. Oof. That really made my guys, day. Guys, 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 I'm with her all the time. <laughs> Trust me, she's yeah. retarded. Yeah, she is. She's <laughs> retarded. You can't do this to <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's developmentally, developmentally disabled. disabled. Um, Gosh, what so, a baby. check it out. I just did hot yoga number <sighs> 12. It's Dang. been ruining our home life. Too many, man. It's too many. You're gone for hours every day. Because we're doing 90 minute fucking classes. Well, I don't get it because let's say your class is like one. Everyone's sick of it, by the way. Everyone, I'm sure. It was Joe's idea. I'm He's sure. sick of it. He was texting He's, <laughs> He's like, I'm so fucking sick of yoga. <laughs> no one wants to do 15 classes in a month about anything. It's a lot. No. Now, have you achieved enlightenment of some sort? I do feel like at the end of, of all the classes, you do have a, a definite sense of clarity. It's a good, it's a good place to go. If you have a decision weighing on your mind, I think. Like whether or not to call somebody retarded or yeah. developmentally challenged. I would be like, mm, I don't know yet. And then at the end of class, I'd be like, she's retarded. <laughs> yeah. So, you okay. Could, you, you really do. What happens is hot yoga, Bikram yoga class, um, a good portion of it is basically meditation. Oh, a, you're, I love you're in that. a meditative state. You Which know? I think Bert could really benefit from. Oh, Bert especially, yeah. Has he been able to but silence? I think everyone does. Has he silenced his monkey mind? I don't know. I think so. I think he is in a, in a different place. Be, we, should do, we should see him again soon. Yeah, right? we should bring him back and get an update. Yeah, get an update on so it. So you leave for, hot, you're, you're like, oh, class is oh, at one. I'll be home at seven you're this, hilarious. this evening. I'm like, what? You Why are does it so funny. Take you six hours to do this shit. Let me break down shit. for this audience what it's like to be with you in this. So. Classes are 90 minutes long, 90, okay? It's hot yoga. Yeah. In, on the class schedule, if you go online, it tells you to arrive, please arrive 15 minutes before class. Okay. So your 90 minutes is now 105 minutes. Oof. Class doesn't start exactly on time. Mostly the class would start, you know, five to 10 minutes after the scheduled time, which means it ends five to 10 minutes after the scheduled time. So... If you're talking about driving to this thing, arriving a little bit early, doing the full class, when you're done, it's 104 degrees in the room. It's like you jumped into a pool. Yeah. So, and then you got to let all those farts out that you've been holding. You got to let time. the farts out. You got to take a shower. Um, there's a single shower. Wait a minute. What? You're like, no, because you were like, you came mm. home the other day and, and you're like, I'm, I'm late because I, I showered there. And I go, yeah. all of you shower there? I mean, what... What yoga? Cl I've never heard of a yoga so yoga yoga studio, honestly, where you could shower after. I have I have never heard of it. But you haven't been I, to a Bikram yoga class. Not Bikram. But that's what I'm in. So well, how I, is that I, part? Again, not I understanding, but I'm saying that you you're like me and the guys. We shower together after, and I was like a group shower, and you're like yes, a group shower, and I thought that was a little fishy. Yeah, the ladies shower too. So everybody showers. Everybody together. showers. Yeah, I think the only person. That I've seen not shower there is Bert, because he just gets in his car. Well, like, wait a minute, soaking wet. But it's not really a group shower. Oh, is, she spits in his. Is he here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. We roll. All right. We, yeah, we we just hit pause. We're back. Uh, Fitz Simmons just came in. Fitz dog. Oh. Uh, the great Greg Fitz Simmons. Oh. And we were talking off mic. Uh, he's actually a hot yoga Bikram yoga practitioner as now, well. He loves it. Greg, isn't it pronounced Bikram? Bikram. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, oh I should, I should I open him. your mic or no? <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Oh, there you are. I'm just noticing I, I can't okay. hear anything from my hear headphones now? either. Can you turn his headphones up? Which Maybe turn those. Good. Probably number yeah. two. There we go. That, yeah, yeah, that's good. Is that good? That's good, yeah. Okay. Good? Okay. Um, yeah, um, I haven't done it a ton, but I used to do it every year I went to San Francisco because that's where it kind of started, I think. Yeah. And I would go up and I would do the punchline and I would always go in on Saturday and do a hot yoga class. And uh, Whoa. Whoa. It, you know, and it, so it was once a year, but then I started doing it with a buddy in Venice. They got one in Venice. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, so I've gone to, I went to my 12th one of the month today. You're supposed to do 15, right? Yeah, so I have to go tomorrow's number 13 and then just two more. Okay. Um, 
Thanks for adding that up. I wasn't sure how I don't 15 know, cause, works cause 13, <laughs> as a concept. And then it goes 14 <laughs> and then 15. That's if you know like all, th- yeah. you have to do all of Right, them. and you do that off the top of your head. <laughs> like, I can just throw another number at me. I'll just Seven. Tell. So you go one and then you get good. Two, three, four, no, five. No, 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 you start at seven. Oh, oh, Eight, oh up nine, to 15? Ten. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that'll take me oh, a while. right. But Christina. My favorite kids joke of all time though is, why Why is five afraid of six? Because seven, eight, nine. Oh, because uh, why is six afraid of seven? Because yeah, seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. What? Come on. You never read bubblegum wrappers? No, no. And then you can see more of these if you, you watch Christina's new special, uh, <laughs> Mother Inferior. It's on Netflix right now. <laughs> Got a bunch of those. Watched it, loved it. A lot of dad jokes, too. Yeah. 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 So, wait, now, is it customary for there to be a group shower after? She thinks it's crazy that I shower. I'm like, I'm. I'm, A group shower. I jumped into a pool after this thing. No, that's what happens. As a matter of fact, I'd never seen my friend Matt, Matt Malloy. I'd never seen him (laughs) naked before. Yeah. And I was okay with it because it wasn't <laughs> like we had just jumped into a cold lake and yeah, they were doing it. This right. was like I had some nice hang. Yeah, yeah, sure. I had some nice puffy flesh going. Sure, man. Sprout. Sweating for a while in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know this, it's weird because like we have a, it's a very small locker room and, a, and it's a single shower. So people have to wait. Ugh. And like some of the guys walk into the shower stall with their shorts on. Yeah. And I'm a dick out guy. Like I I take it off. I sure. stand I stand naked. Yeah. In the locker room. It's kind of really a separation of like who's a grown up in here, you know? <laughs> Cuz like I feel like the No, I'm serious. Or who's an immigrant. It's real Russian yeah. immigrant style. To, it to is. My, my tribe just to be yeah. naked with your dick out. Yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. Is. Not give a shit. Yeah. Well, it's um I was a very skinny kid and I had I had I had puberty at like I was close to 15 I think when I had what? puberty. What? Yeah. So I remember freshman hockey, I used to go, I used to go to practice, not making this up. I was so embarrassed to even take my pants off oh. that I used to strap my shin guards and put my my pants, my hip pants on over my jeans. What? Oh wow. And I would play hockey with my jeans on underneath. That's, That's crazy. Excellent. Because I was so embarrassed by my twiggy little legs, my hairless twiggy little legs. Really? You thought you were gonna be mocked by others like the other kids? I was horrified about my body. And so and then I would hitchhike home because the rink was like twenty minutes away and it was this is New York in the hitchhike winter. Hitchhike home. I would stand on the side of the highway in January That's drenched in sweat. Nuts. <laughs> yeah. The um Oh my god. We, <laughs> Who raised you? Where, where were your parents? And then one of my teachers Jesus. picked me up on the side of 287, and they drove me home. It was, it was way out of her way to take me all the way home. And then they called my mom the next day, and they were like, do you know that I picked your son up hitchhiking last night at yeah. nine, 9 o'clock on 287? And my mom went like, well, how else was he going to get home? It's like, oh. you should have picked him up and driven him. Not only that, never bought me any <laughs> hockey equipment. I used to bum like old skates off friends. <laughs> And I, I remember going through the garbage in the locker room and finding broken shin pads and then taping them on with tape. I'd find tape rolls that were thrown out that weren't completely gone, and I would use those because they never bought me a piece of sporting equipment what? in my life. And I played oh sports. God. How did they not buy you a... And meanwhile, we had money. That's but even worse. That's even worse because my mom grew both my parents grew up in the Bronx and they didn't have any money. Yeah. And my mom especially. Like Super my grandparents poor. were from Ireland. They came over here like literally <laughs> off the boat. Right. Nothing. And so my mom grew up with seven brothers and sisters. Oh geez. And just like penny pinched. And she couldn't even though my father was in radio and he made good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She couldn't spend the money. Yeah, I really? feel the same way. I and how many how many kids, how many siblings did you have? A brother and a sister. A brother and a sister. So yeah. everybody had this experience then, that your siblings. Yeah. That's that's wild. Man. Yeah. Is this something you guys talk about a lot or no? There's so many other things to get to yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah. You know, that doesn't, that's at the bottom of the list. Really? No, it wasn't that bad. As a matter of fact, my, my sister has said to my wife, she doesn't get what me and my brother are complaining about so much because she thinks that everything was isn't it interesting, bad but though? fine. But isn't that mm. funny? She's the baby. That's with the why. siblings, though, when you talk about the shared experience, yeah. I always find that. Like I have two sisters, and I've heard in different in different scenarios, uh, either one of us ha- having the you know the totally different version. Were of, you younger or older? I'm a middle. I'm the middle. Oh, kid. you're the middle. But like I, I think I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm the most even tempered of the three to begin with and then like my version of something will always be usually more like a recollection will be like that was pretty normal yeah and theirs will always be like more heightened you uh-huh. know like that more emotional 
exaggeration of something. I'll be like, no, that wasn't. Well, I think I think you guys know this as parents. You guys have gone through some pretty major life changes in the last couple of years, and uh, I think you deal with a different set of parents at any given time. Yeah. And birth oh, order, they true. say, has a huge effect on how you're treated. You know, the first one, they're they're nervous, they're scared. That kid can be neurotic. They could end up being hyper achieving because oh, like there's that. so much pressure on them. And then the middle kid can get lost a little bit because then the younger one gets the, it's the baby. We got to, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and the younger yeah. one generally gets treated the best, but they also feel the most pressure to not cause any issues. They're, oh, they're, they to tend to be super needs. likable, not yeah. have needs. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, I think boy. that was me in, in our family. Yeah. yeah. The middle kid, because they were like, the older kid had more like, you know, shit going on and, and acting out. And then the baby was the baby. And they're like, the good thing about you is that you're, you're not demanding like to me you know they were like that's the great yeah. thing about you is that you're a nice kid you're easy you're easy to deal with yeah. and you're not causing us any trouble yeah and I, was like, I used to hear that okay. too that's a really they good look song. you right in the eye when yeah. they say that yeah yeah you're nice <laughs> yeah. everybody likes yeah. you yep. and stay and you're not way. causing any problems right which you is keep great. your grades okay yeah. you don't get drunk yeah. and you're just taking it yeah. all Everything in good going, those yeah. are my marching orders yeah. Yeah. that's right of course yeah and i don't think they consciously realize that they're telling you to do that you know i think they think part of them thinks like they're just re- re- like telling you how it is, yeah. but they're actually telling you what to do. Yeah, you know, I don't know if they process that at the time. Um, I think subconsciously you tell your kids a lot, and I'm starting to become more aware of that because my kids are so different. My son is like, boom, straight A's, captain of the soccer team, captain of the club soccer team, girlfriend, steady friends, um, the nicest, most even kid, like. I literally couldn't tell you what I would change about this kid. And then sometimes I wonder, am I, is he being that way because we're subtly demanding that of him? Right, the Uh perfectionism. Oh, right. Because he's almost too good. Right. Yeah. And you're not aware of it, obviously. You know, you don't know until later when your kids tell you that you were a bad parent. God damn. There's no way you were bad. You weren't bad. I I travel. I feel like maybe that has an effect on them. I mean, it I've gone does, every other weekend. But, but your wife is there, right? So somebody's She's been a full-time always, mom for 17 yeah, years. Yeah, so somebody's always there. Yeah. Same with Tom and I. We take turns traveling, but one of us is always there. Yeah. I think that's the key, right? Yeah. No, we don't both. And don't either. let your kids hitchhike. Don't you love... <laughs> How that <laughs> that's this that's that crazy. our gener- yeah. but that people hitchhiked. I grew up here in the San Fernando Valley. You somebody, fucking hitchhiked. I just saw some uh like a grown man. Yeah, who's doing yeah. that? Who's doing like, that? What the fuck are you doing? Man? I hitchhiked. I used to I used to work as a caddy at a golf course that was like fifteen minutes away. Yeah. And I used to get up at like six o'clock in the morning and I would get out on the road and I would hitchhike to work. <laughs> no, and then I would no. caddy like two loops. I was like fourteen years old and I would no. caddy two loops. <laughs> Two giant bags. I told you how skinny I was. Yeah. And then I would uh, hitchhike home. Who would pick up? Because like, pi- you, you got a bunch of rides. So Sometimes it took a long time. Really? Yeah. Was it um, <laughs> questionable people picking you up usually? or I like- never had a bad experience. Really? Not once. Wow. wow. Nope. My friend Pete, who is my best friend, we hitchhiked together a lot. Yeah. And uh, he had a guy. He went, he went to school in the Bronx. And so he had a guy pick him up. Two different guys twice picked him up that were jerking off. Wow. Mm, yeah. I could see that happening a lot. But yeah. for guys, here's the crazy thing about this whole, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein thing. Yeah. And not to, you know, and you had some very interesting opinions on it when you, Thank Christina you. did my podcast the other day and I thought you had some very brave takes on it. <laughs> Me, meaning she would blow a guy for a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And her husband would encourage her. Yeah. That's a movie? Yeah. A starring role a in a st- movie? Not even like starring. A, I mean, if it's a big enough film. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like a big Hollywood movie? Sure. I gotta show me the dick. Film for some film. Are you kidding me? If yeah. A guy, if a guy jerked off. Big deal. Off, that's not a big when deal. When I needed a ride and he gave me that ride still, <laughs> I wouldn't mind if That's what I'm off. saying. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And so I know a comedian <laughs> who was kind of mentored by another comedian. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the older comedian brought him over his apartment one night, and he jer- he just started jerking off in front of him, mm-hmm. and the guy just left. Yeah, and he fucking still considers him like a mentor. 
Still, oh, yeah. Still, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? It's just like, all right. So the the guy jerked off. It's it's almost <laughs> like you know. I, believe me, I'm not belittling the Harvey Weinstein thing or anybody. Do, yeah. do I need to even say what I'm in the middle of saying? No, but no, no, I think we it's, get it. I think it's the funny thing about guys is like guys <laughs> forgiving guys doing like guys can also feel like somebody could act violently, right? And, yeah, uh, a man and a woman be like, I'm gonna stay away from that guy for the rest of my life. And a guy can act violently in front of another guy, like a friend. I'm saying, and he'll still like he'll get over. He'll be like, "Oh, I had fist fights with all yeah, yeah, my like, friends." Like, uh, you know, yeah, you guys yeah, externalize your anger. He, you know, he punched a hole in that wall and broke right. that guy's jaw. But like, yeah. he's a yeah. good guy. And you're yeah, like, we don't do that. No, I had yeah. I used to have fist fights with my close friends, and we would get <laughs> over it. I mean, it would take a week. Yeah, and then we'd be over it. Yeah. Yeah, but I hear stories about guys jerking off in front of each other too, like sleepover parties when you're. Uh, You've heard younger. those stories? Yeah, like I I've, never heard those stories. My guy friends were like, "Yeah, we used to have sleeping bags, and we'd sleep on either side of the bed, and then we'd watch some movie, and then we both jerk." Babe, off that's me. Seriously, oh, was that you? Story. You yeah. did that? Yeah. No. We, I used to go over across the street <laughs> to uh, my friend's house. I won't say his name, <laughs> um, but but we would uh, he would have you know everyone would be in sleeping bags, and then we would put on the Spice <laughs> Channel. But spice didn't come in. You would it would snow, You're right? And then you'd get like some, some <laughs> get a random tit yeah, shot. You get a random shot, and then everyone, no one would be like, "Hey, check me out." But everyone would be like humping the floor, <laughs> or like you could you could feel you know all the wrestling in the sleeping bags, and then it, people would just be like, <clears throat> and then we're like ten, eleven, and then everyone pass out, and that was like a sleepover on like a Friday, Saturday night. For a year or two, that was happening. No way! All the time, and you never talked about. No it. No one talked about it. it. Was yeah, it wasn't like people having because it was at the age of like <laughs> starting to do that. In other words, like it's not like you're fifteen, sixteen. You've been doing it for a while. It's like ten, eleven years old. So it, you wouldn't even that's know. Earlier, you had puberty. I, Jesus. I, I guess I was, so. I was twenty-one. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I was the poor, poor Greg. I mean, fifteen years old yeah. when that kicks in. Like, All did right. you have some kind of pituitary? thing or, or well, I don't know I don't know I'm just like I'm not even I didn't have hair for a long time and uh, you know I have kind of a high voice I'm a, I'm a feminine man and why I've always <laughs> tried to overcompensate you're really not but I've always tried to overcompensate by being tough and like sure. being aggressive like a little cocky sharp tongue it's a little sharp tongue but you yeah. know that's all hiding a you know yeah. early years of having a sure. shame with my body yeah. I think do you know what um, oh, our, in our high school so I switched high schools and when I arrive at high school, I'm a, I'm a freshman. I, I switched during my freshman year. And after the first football practice, I'm a, I'm a freshman, but I'm playing with, you know, uh, I'm on the varsity team because we're, we're doing a spring ball. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm playing for the first time in spring football on the varsity team. So people are getting, after practice, taking their pads and their stuff off. And I notice all the guys going into the shower with their boxers on. And like... It's so weird. So what happens is nobody wanted to shower naked, but why? Just they were just. It was like, I don't know. But here's the thing: like I'm a freshman, so I came from. I switched from a school where everybody was showering naked because it's a shower. But since I I switched, and there's upperclassmen wearing boxers in the shower, I just kept my boxers on too because you didn't want to be the person who's insisting on being naked. Yeah. So people showered. With their boxers on, and then took their boxers off once they had a towel around them. How weird Interesting. is that? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And this is this is like, I'm 14, and these are like 17, 18 year old guys mm. show, showering in their boxers. You think actually the shower, the, the most integral part of the shower is the asshole and the ball sack. It's right. the only reason. Yeah. 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 And those boxers Armpits. are so na- football boxers. Like they, you just ran around and just you know, it's just gnarly, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and nobody, except for like, by the time I was a senior, the one kid who we suspected was gay and definitely turned out to be gay was walking around without boxers. That was it. <laughs> that was the only kid who took his box, and he had a big fucking dick on him too. Wow. So he was like, "Hey, what's up? It's out here." I've spent so little time around naked guys. Yeah. At the Friars Club, I used to uh, belong to the Friars Club in New York. Yeah. And they have the best steam room in New York City. It's like this old marble. And uh, this is going to sound crazy, but I swear to God this is true. You go in, and it's so old school Jewish that when you walk in, you put on a towel, and you sit down, and then this, this Yugoslavian guy comes in, this old Yugoslavian guy, and he brings you ice water and a towel that's been dunked in ice, and he hands it to you. 
And so you sit there, and and it's completely balls. Once you get in there, it's balls out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so it's all these old dudes, and their sacks are like hanging over the bench and down yeah. towards the floor. Yeah. Um, they're you know their penis. You can't tell if they have a big penis or it just melted. Yeah. The skin is <laughs> over, flapping over skin, and yeah. gravity and life has just yeah wreaked havoc yeah. on these bodies. And there's splotches of hair. Sometimes yeah. you know have they shaved it or did the hair just fall out? Yeah. And so and so you finish with the shower and then you walk to the shower you finish with the steam and you walk to the shower and they have these giant fucking marble sided showers with a with a manhole cover size shower head on it, Love it. and it blasts like a thousand gallons a second. Oh. You feel it's like it's like being in a civil rights riot. <laughs> <laughs> There's German shepherds barking underneath this, thing. and then you shout, and then you, uh, and then I would jerk off a lot. Not because I just saw those dicks, just because I was like 22 and I yeah. was just jerking off all the time. Sure. And so I would jerk off, and then uh, I would come out, and the Yugoslavian guy would wait for you, and he'd have a dry towel, and he would put it around your shoulders, and then he would pat you dry, your neck, what? then your arms, wow. then your back, then your butt. Then yeah. your legs and yeah. your feet. He would pat. Is that is that it's, an Eastern it's, European thing? Yes, it is. So in Hungary, then do you tip that guy? Is that how oh yeah, you tip him every day yeah. when you leave. Yeah, it's normal in Hungary. There's the thermal baths it, because the Turks were in Hungary at some point, and so they have uh, the you know famous Gelair Hotel, and you you get buck naked, and and yeah, someone pats you down. They're very hands on. They can yeah. be very hands on. Don't you dare get a massage at the Gelair because that's like. You know, you're you're buck naked, and then like the the big lady will open the curtain, and like people will be walking by, yeah. and you're just getting slapped and slathered with right. like soap. It's it's they're not as squeamish as Americans are yeah. about the body, definitely. Yeah, I, I think the like Irish it. are very squeamish. I think it's probably a Catholic thing. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've always yeah. It took me a long time. I'm not. I'm still not comfortable with my body. But should we get naked? You want to? <laughs> I'll get naked. I'll do hot yoga with you. I'm at, at right now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, and then we'll do hot yoga in here. <laughs> I can turn the heat on. Because it's going to get hot. It's going to get hot in here. Yeah. I'll tell you, after having a kid, I don't give a shit. And I think it's because you, when you give birth, you're wide open. And like, I was pushing Ellis out. As I was pushing, the nurses had a shift change. Yeah. So it was li- like five new people got to see my cooch split yeah. open. Yeah. So you're just like, I don't care. I'm, I'm done. My body is a functional thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't feel weird about it. Yeah, I think I feel less weird than I used to. You know, like I uh I used to bench press a lot because that was how I overcame being skinny. It's like in college oh, I actually right. got kind of not big, but you know, bigger. And the worst thing about that is then you get older and you your tits fall. <laughs> yeah, mine have. Yeah. And and the and you know, and it's just so fucking embarrassing to the point where you get so embarrassed that you stop being embarrassed. Right. Yeah. That you just let go into it. Yeah. That's right. Surrender. Yeah. Surrender to your ugly, shitty yeah. body. And right. that's that thing you would, and that's yeah. what you end up. It's funny because you would, I, you, part of you admires, I do, like the notably flawed person who really doesn't care. You yeah. know what I mean? And then you're like, I want to be like that. And then sometimes you become like that. And you're like, oh, oh yeah. I'm not, you're like, I just don't care anymore. Bobby Lee. Bobby yeah. Lee, don't give a fuck. Well, and if you yeah, notice, yeah. if you right. if you go on vacation or to any ocean or pool, most people have shitty bodies. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's like, a small yeah. section that I'm good. Yeah. And when I do see them, I think I'm glad I'm looking at their body. But I think to myself, how much time and work oh. went into their life Full for time. this moment? Yeah. Yeah. For this, yes. you know, how many moments do people get to see their body? Like when right. we saw Perfect Dad on that last <laughs> vacation. <laughs> you saw Perfect Dad. We saw Perfect Dad, fucking like Swedish Adonis. six four, yeah. sculpted, yeah. just <laughs> every like with the V, yeah, the fucking the lower, you know, the lower ab V, <laughs> right, good and, feet, and yeah, and he holding <laughs> one kid and walking with the other. We're like, where does yeah. this beautiful motherfucker get time to do to work out? Yeah. Like this? And yeah. his wife was like, okay, right. she was like an okay shape, but this dude was just. I mean, he looked. I was like, I bet this guy's an Olympian. Like, yeah, th- that's that's the type of build he had. Yeah, but like he stood out amongst hundreds. Of, you know what yeah. I mean? Like everybody else was dog shit. Yeah. Well, how do you feel with the body change that you've just gone through? I mean, do you feel like you want to go out on the beach and show people your body now? No, no. I I think it's you know it's different. I was actually telling someone about it. It's like you, the change happens with with like with your weight and everything slowly. Yeah, and I think it just. You kind of get it reinforces to you like, oh, like this still sucks pretty badly. Like my body, I'll be like, oh, like you're still <laughs> you're still it. pretty fat. 
and it's been a lot of weight is gone. But then I, I always try to remind myself of like how getting out of shape actually took a long time. Because what happens is like yeah. when, you're, when you're in it, when you really are like really eating well and working out, it can be frustrating when you just some random day, you're like, I haven't eaten poorly in a month and I've done nothing but work out. And, I'm, and you just see like your fat, shitty flaws. Uh-huh. And you're like, that sucks. But then you go like, yeah, but to get out of shape, it wasn't like I ate three bad meals. You know what I mean? It was neglect and sitting and eating shitty food for years to to put on that weight. So yeah. a month or two months or six months is not gonna be like all that all that bad shit is is gone. It mm-hmm. takes a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I mean with me, like I definitely don't feel like, oh wow, this is like I joke around, you know, like I and I'll tease Bert and uh, you know, but like I no, I feel like I'm in Terrible. You look physical. great, Tommy. I mean, I compliment you nah. every day. You do. You look great. Well, thanks. You look so yeah. handsome. Yeah. Like I, your face That's looks so too. different. Yeah. Yeah. Your body looks fantastic. Yeah. I think. I mean, you look great, heavy. Yeah. I, thankfully, I like you both ways. I like yeah. you heavy. I like you skinny. Yeah, you definitely but tolerated that. Tolerated. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> How about your body? You sucked off the the mom. You weighed fast. You did. Thank you. Yeah, you look good. You dropped a lot. Yeah, I got real fat. Nah, you know, you just don't eat carbs or sugar or have fun. No alcohol. You were yeah. just it's doing suffering. It's just, you have to suffer. That's just it. Yeah. There's no easy way, right? You just suffer. Well, I guess it's a matter of like your palate. I think for some people you get addicted to carbs. And so the withdrawal from carbs and sugars is very intense. It's intense. It and I intense. think for some people they just were never that into carbs. So it's not that big a deal. I you're, get, yeah, you're when I fan. think about... Yeah, I've had, I I'm not even going to say out loud what I want to say. Why? Well, no, I should <laughs> because I can tell you how horrifying it was to be that skinny when I was little. Uh, I literally eat anything that I want. Yeah, uh. no, I, I get it, man. Because but everyone ha- like, I don't know, man. I, I, everyone has their own issue with different things. Yeah. So well, it's like I've never had. For me, it's definitely food, and I definitely was eating a crazy. Like I was thinking about once you make a transition, and and for a while you're conscious of your eating. And you go, how I used to eat was so insane. Yeah. <laughs> Where, Especially like, as comedians. Oh, yeah. And oh like when God. I think about like eating with normal people and, and like they would, you know, they would, like a, a regular person would see one of my meals as like <laughs> an indul- like a vacation meal. I'd be like, uh-huh. I, I guess we'll do this today. And I'd be yeah. like, I do this every day. <laughs> like I always do this. And like, oh, you know, yeah. I would eat just like, with I just no regard for it. Did you the, mean like a regular meal at a restaurant? What you would order like an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert? A hundred percent. Yeah. And like <laughs> and and maybe like order another thing that like I just want to try that. Uh-huh. And and like, like another entree or a side? May, maybe both. No shit. Yeah, but I wouldn't even like I wouldn't fucking even process it. And like I would have if I was on the road, I would have breakfast. I would have something like rich and fatty, but then I would be like, I gotta have something sweet, so I have like. A waffle, uh-huh. and then like, if they're like, "Have you seen this bakery that has like they have amazing croissants?" I'd be like, "Let's go, let's go try it." Yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna throw up, so let's wait like an hour. <laughs> yeah, but then when I'm done, like once it digests, like I just wouldn't, I wouldn't think that I wouldn't even think it was that much of an indulgence. Yeah, I would think it Remember, was kind of normal. You know, Tommy, we used to at our old house in uh, back in Redondo the last time we saw you, we used to make brownies. I would I would bake brownies like every night. And All then the time. every night, and then we would eat like half the tray, nice and hot. Put some ice cream oh on that, God. some syrup. And I'm like, well, no wonder you know we got. Bit. And here's the yeah. other thing: before I, I, I always forget this. Before we invited the public to shame us about being fat, like Bert and I specifically, mm. and we did this weight loss challenge. Yeah, dude. When I would post things on social media, maybe one out of 400 comments would be about being fat. Nobody mm-hmm. would say anything to me. Mm-hmm. Nobody was like, you're fat. One person might. You know, you're like, oh, this guy's a dick. Well, because you're built to be fat. You've yeah, got the a, build. I have a big fat That is so built. great. Yeah. That's true. What a great He's, thing to say. You're right. It's you true. are built to be fat. So yeah. people would just be like, it's fine. You're yeah. Built to be fat. That's a good name for a special. <laughs> Shit, I hey, have an actual new t-shirt. I just shot, I just shot an, <laughs> a special. And, uh, and I, I submitted the title, but I think it might change I it to built, built to be fat. fat's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Built to be fat is amazing. That's a great Yeah, title. I mean, you've got the face for it. Yeah. You've got a big head. Yeah. Yeah. Shoulders are broad. And then yeah. you add a beard into that. Forget it. Yeah. You know what I might do 
put on a hundred pounds <laughs> and have another special called Built to Be Fat, <laughs> right? where it's like I put it all back on. Right. That well, yeah. Be, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, um, what's her name got pregnant again to do her next special? <laughs> to do oh, her sure. next special. <laughs> yeah. Allie. Allie. Oh my yeah. God. You know people are going to say that too. Oh, yeah. they're gonna be like, Oh, if she did it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's intentional. But it's yeah. a ticking clock. She's got to get the special done. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, how old's the other baby? Her baby's uh, like two. Oh, it's two already. Yeah, oh. her baby's her, her her baby's going to be two in like a right, month. Yeah. right. Yeah, so. she's uh, she's so fucking funny. She's Jesus great. Christ. She's a great person. So too. good. Yeah, she's, she's really the best. sweet. Yeah. Um. So okay. So I have a gift for you guys. What? Because you know you um when you had the baby. And uh, Christina reminded me of this when I came on. I got you guys a uh, a, a wipe a genie. What is it? A wiper no, genie? No, the wiper warmer. Wiper warmer. Which, by the way, the best gift. has become our go-to yes. gift for expected That's parents. That's great. Yeah, and, and we think of it as like, oh, this is what a comic should get. Yes, somebody. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's like, you know, when you think about a baby and you think about how little control they have about joy and all that stuff, a hot wipe on the asshole Aww. is the best. It's just it, every single time it would put the baby in a good mood. Yeah. Yep. And so by I the got, way, if you're about to give me a notebook full of jokes, I'm super appreciative <laughs> because I have I need a new hour and I really Well, you remember so that do I, Greg. You remember that movie uh Field of Dreams if they if you build it they will come? Yes. It's an empty notebook. Ah, but here's what ah. it is. Is this book right here? Look in this. This is what I we kept since the sorry. Because how old is your kid now? Nine months. No, he's no, almost two years almost old. Almost two. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's almost two. What? Yeah. yeah. God damn. All right, so I might be a little late with this, but not too late. We started this. Somebody gave us this when when the when our first kid started talking, Aww. and it's you write down every quote, every cute thing that they say Aww. or meaningful thing, and we've got it for years. Oh. And uh, so I got oh. you guys the same book. It's oh, thank skin. you. Do you have? Have you been keeping record of the well, things? Well, I opened up an email account for Ellis when he was born, and we email him. We write. We send him photos, yeah. and photos, uh, and, video, and, and we but write this him emails. Is, but this is. Do you write quotes special. of things that no. he said? No. Well, we'll say like this today we did this, yeah. and like you said that. Yeah, we right. kind of like this a version, great. but that is All totally right. different. This is fantastic. Thank and, you and so much. And I brought much. I brought mine so I could read you a couple of the good ones that my kids had said. Oh. We'll start. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta show them that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll show them. This is special because it's handwritten from mommy and daddy. That is very, and very, that's sweet. very special. Do you know how much like that's sweet? Because I was thinking about this like as we get like I'm 38 and like I have you know every year like your appreciation and your relationship with your parents change. Yeah, like if I was my eight like right now reading this that my parents wrote yeah it would have such an impact on oh me. already no yeah. this thing is dog-eared because my kids at uh, their uh, they're 17 and 14 like to sit around and read this all really? the time oh. oh there's nothing kids when they're adolescents like more than to see pictures of themselves and hear what they were like they love stories about themselves because they don't know who they are yet right oh, right, right right and they think it's hysterical when when you show them that they were cute um. All right. Uh, Owen wa was tired, and he said, um, "Mommy, more snores, please." Do you want to take a nap? <laughs> oh, that's, that's like so that's cute. Sweet. And uh, he said, "Wait, let me find a good one." Aww. This was the the quote that we still quote almost constantly. We were in the airport, and we we're flying from New York back to L.A., and we had to get up super early. And Owen was three ish, and he was cranky. And we got some breakfast, but we tried to give them good food. So we tried to find oatmeal. We couldn't find it. And so we ended up having to buy him a chocolate muffin. And so we give it to him, and he was so excited. He was, like, shaking. <laughs> and then we said, but you can't eat the whole thing. And I took the top off. I said, you can just eat the part that's in the thing. And he goes, Daddy, you don't know all the rules about muffins. <laughs> <laughs> And to this day, we constantly we say, say you don't know all the rules about whatever it is that we're talking right. about. Oh, yeah. that's adorable. Tell me if this is too corny. I just no, thought it would man. be cute. No, we love it. All I'm right. going to do this for the E-man. Because um, he just started talking. He just started really letting it run. Run your finger along your crack of your ass. <laughs> you don't need to finger your hole. You don't want to come back with shit on your finger. And he was four? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. This is Owen when he was uh, six. Uh, I was carrying out a plate of fresh-cut pineapple, and he said, Come on, Daddy, let's go eat some heaven. 
Oh, oh that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I like. I think my favorite thing too is that he enjoys reading this. That that's really yeah. really yeah. Um, this is JoJo when she was about uh, six. Violet's mom. Her mom, her friend's black. My father's mom has really uh, curly hair and wide fingernails, but that's okay because she's an extremely nice person. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I like qualifying it, you know, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, he yeah. was not, he, not a racist, she was not a racist kid, but you know. Yeah. Black and white is black and white. For sure. And then this another black and white one. Um, this is Owen before watching a Michael Jackson video. Is he going to be black or white in this one? <laughs> <laughs> and then after watching the video, he said, I like his hair better after the fire. Oh, <laughs> oh man. He was already slinging him. Damn. <laughs> um, uh, then this is JoJo the first week of school when she was in kindergarten. Everyone at school is always having fights to play with me. I hate myself because it's like I'm starting wars. <laughs> so when adorable. you would hear these, you guys would just run to the notebook. Oh yeah, I feel like it would. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We should keep it in like the kitchen or something. Yeah. yeah. And then um, she so had like, oh, like all of her friends were black for some reason growing up. Maybe it's because we live in a really poor neighborhood. No, <laughs> we live in Venice, so there's a lot of like you know diversity. But she says, "Mommy." Why do I like all the dark ones the best? <laughs> oh man, that is so funny. And then this was uh here's a little one act play. After jo- they my kids make fun of me going bald constantly. It's their go to thing. Still now? Oh yeah, yeah. But this is when they were really little. Yeah. Uh, Jojo was making fun of my hair falling out and then Owen said don't listen to Jojo teasing you and I said thanks Owen and he went you're welcome baldy <laughs> <laughs> alright I'm not going to keep reading because oh, I have no idea if this is annoying you. no it's cute. not it's really it's really adorable, adorable. Yeah. we're really going to do it thank you for that yeah, gift, yeah. By the way. Enjoy. yeah I remember that wanting to learn who I was and what, what I was like and that's my- the thing is that you feel like yeah, it's true it, it's like they, it gives you it gives you a sense of identity <laughs> to know what Where you're you were from. Like, you know? Well, because our memories are so selective. Yeah. I mean, I read this thing about um, interviewing eyewitnesses for jury pools, and uh, not jury pools, for eyewitnesses for, for trials. And our ability to truly remember what happened is like 0.1%. Mm. It's like, you know, when and when you're talking about your childhood with all the emotions that go around it, and you hear other people telling the story about you, so it's really their version of who you were. And so to have the actual quote from them shows them as close to you, you as you can get to who they really are. And especially when and the my story, daughter's racist. <laughs> when the story is like clearly is um is something pos- like a positive quality, I think. Where yeah. and like if you're in that age where maybe you're you know, I don't know. You're maybe you're a young teen and you're shy, and you're, you're not sure of yourself. And they tell, and you you hear a story about your you being a, a little kid doing something where you were assertive, yes. you know, or so they, it's like they it gives you confidence. You yes, go, you go like, oh, like who I really am is the story you're telling. You know, it cha- it changes the way you feel about yourself. Your perception, right? Of and yourself. my my parents told me a story when I was a kid because I grew up with a lot of black kids too. And there was Jesus a kid. Christ, with the blacks. There was a kid who invited me to his birthday party, and then I found out that he didn't invite our friend. His name was Yemi Awalabi. He was from Africa. <clears throat> didn't invite Yemi, and so I said to the kid who was like my best friend, but his mother didn't want Yemi there. I said I wouldn't go to the party, and I was only like seven. You're and like, if, if this kid's not going, I'm if not he's going. not going, I'm not wow. going. Because I figured then the musical suck and nobody can dance. <laughs> I went to high school oh, wow. with a kid named Afuma Obichua. Who, uh, damn. Damn. Yeah, he was African. Obichua. Really? Yeah, you Obichua. think so? Yeah. It's but, funny. I was asking my dad to reminisce when I gave birth to Ellis. Uh, I was like, Dad, what, like, what was I like? How much did I weigh when I was born? He goes, I don't know, normal. <laughs> I'm his only child. <laughs> like, you, you'd remember the one, right? Yeah. Just normal. I what time of day was it? Remember the time? No. 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 It was it. I don't remember. <laughs> Were they? Did they have a lot of pictures of you? <laughs> no. Friday. No, they had an Monday. album. My mom put together an album. Yeah. 
Yeah. You must have been a cute little kid. I was really attractive. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah, sweet. You were, yeah. God. Really cutie. Hmm. The pictures we had. And then had the gothier set in. Amazing. Oh. And then I got real dark. What was that, like 12, 13? Uh, yeah, yeah. The darkness, the darkness came over me. Let me ask you this, because this sure. is good to know. Uh, my daughter, now that she's 14, is going into that place where... She comes in the front door and is in her room very quickly, yeah, and yeah. you don't see her except for dinner. And, you know, she's actually very sweet, but she can be pissy towards my wife. When does that end, and are you, were you aware that you were doing that, and did you feel bad about it later? Uh, I don't feel bad about it because I was hiding from my family. I didn't like being around them. Yeah. At the time. My, my family's different than what you guys had by far, like what you have, rather. A lot of it is high school drama. Did she just start high school? Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is like what happened at school and she might be talking to her girlfriends about mm. it. Like, oh my God, and then he did this or we did that. Like you're analyzing a lot of what happened to you. You're, you're you processing break down the data. high school. Yeah. yeah. So that could be, I think that's really, it's it's like this girl world that you inhabit at mm. that age. So it ends when you start to realize you're not the center and like it doesn't matter. Like by 16, I think you're like, oh, I'm yeah. not the only human around, and mom and oh, dad are not quick, that bad. That's quick to get out of it. My two sisters, 17. My yeah. two sisters yeah. were really bad. By senior year. Really bad. Yeah. To I'm saying like with like kind of being rude and shitty to my parents, mm. and they were over it before high school ended. Yeah. yeah. And, and junior they, year, and they did feel bad and felt even worse later. Once know? they had kids. Well, before even having kids, like once you're like in your 20s they, they would feel like really guilty about how shitty their attitudes were yeah yeah like they feel really bad because like they were like you know like super embarrassed of them and like just like ir- and they, they were just oh, snappy oh yeah they were snapping all the time yeah you know? and you're like what the fuck man like she's in ninth grade She's in ninth grade. Yeah, yeah. that's a hard year. Ninth that's grade's the year. first year of high school, so it's like this huge leap into becoming a teenager, like yeah. a legit teenager. So, yeah. well, this, the place might make you feel better. Let me show yeah. you this. Uh, this uh, we, we we were sent this video. This lady, um, she there, were, she and her boyfriend were asked to leave a bus, <laughs> and then um, she didn't want to leave the bus. <laughs> and so the police are outside the bus. And then she spit. Towards the cop. Her boyfriend. I miss him? Her, well, her boyfriend is trying to get. This is the boyfriend is trying to get her off, like trying to get the policeman to not arrest her, just by repeating that she's retarded, so she's not accountable. But. <laughs> Oh, I didn't hear that. Sorry. She's retarded. Oh. She's retarded. I missed so, uh, him. Don't do it. Don't do it. She's retarded. Oh. She's retarded. I told you, Tim, go start it. She's retarded. <laughs> and did you see the PC police step yeah. in and go, He's... mentally disabled? Yeah. Don't even. Some but guy the on cop the... was saying that? No, it's no. another bus rider is it's like, she's just, the word is developmentally disabled. And uh. he continues like throughout as they bring her off the bus. It's back there, baby. Well, Teddy's back there. Don't give my Teddy back. He's going to go with him like your brother. Oh, oh no. She's retarded. She's retarded. She's retarded. She's retarded. She, she's not about money. I she's love that he, he's correcting the guy that's trying to help her. That's clearly her guardian, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, speaking of which, um, oh. we're doing a benefit, Christina and yes. I. I think you're, you're out, out of town, town. When? November eighth at the um, comedy store for the best buddies. That's cool. Which is a group of developmentally disabled people that <laughs> Deve- uh, developmentally disabled. That I'm throwing uh, this benefit for. But that's it, cool. But it's going to be Rogan, oh. you, oh. Uh, Tony. Hinchcliffe oh. and uh, Pete Holmes. Wow, it's look big, at all star. Plus, bl- plus a black act to be named later, because <laughs> you got to get that, one. That yeah, your daughter will select. My daughter will select. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be in New York. I would love to go. I'll be I in New know. York. Yeah, it'll um, be fun. It'll be fun. So uh, get your tickets at November, Comedy Store. November eighth. November eighth. November eighth. Yeah. Definitely support that. Um, so we we'll catch you up on something that's been it, it's w- <laughs> rolling into this week. Uh, a few weeks ago, somebody sent us this guy who walking down the street decided he was going to write a song in the camera and it, there wasn't a lot going on in the song uh-huh. um, he just I'm trying to sing my song I'm trying to sing my song uh-huh. um, okay here we go here we go 
I have another beat down for you. I tried to practice practice my um, song. This is my introduction to my song. Coming at you. Uh, here we go. I'll sing it. Okay. She's retarded. Machines <laughs> were thin. Machines were thin. I got a gun. I got a gun. Yeah, I got a gun. Terminator gun. Yeah, machines were thin. Machines were thin. T-16. T-16. Trying to rake my rap. Trying to make my rap. Trying to practice on my flow. <laughs> Trying to practice on my flow. Machines were thin. Machines were thin. Machines were thin. I'm out on the street. I don't give a F. F the haters. F all the haters. So that. <laughs> you can't you, tell me you don't like that. You don't, yeah. Like a little bit you of You enjoyed that. Good. I can tell. He's like if DJ Kellad was actually dumber. <laughs> <laughs> so. We knew it would happen. We get we get of all the podcasts the most amazing song submissions. So last week, oh, that was made specifically for your show. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh. no. So, but we know that like whenever we play like you know like we play like she's retarded clip. Yeah, like someone will make a song out of that. And send oh, it to okay. Us. And like some of them are legit song pro- like production people. You know, they'll just. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. I have another beat down for you. I try to practice practice my own song. This is my introduction. This is a certified hood classic. <laughs> yeah, I got a gun. Terminator gun. Yeah, I got a gun. <laughs> I mean, Terminator it's gun. a real really song, good. you know? Yeah, I got a gun. <laughs> Terminator gun. Terminator yeah, got a gun. gun. So that was. He's got a he gun. Auto tuned him. Yeah. Beautiful. T16. T16. 100. Machines within. Machines within. Machines within. So those came in. <laughs> I've been having machines within stuck in my head for oh, the last machines two weeks. Machines within. It's kind of catchy though, right? It sounds That's like a, a vibrator store. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it. It uh, it's incredible, machines and yeah. more machines within came in this oh, week. Right. So here's a get a, um, get a gun. Yeah, it's, Terminator it's, gun. Let's see what this one is here. Yeah. This is it. Wow. This is the mix. Yeah. It's a good song now. <laughs> incredible. That's amazing. This is a. Uh, by the way, this is so good. Machines Within Metal by Machines. So he made a real. Dude, but did like he a put song. a band together and? No. So what happens is like okay. So for like the first few, what happened was people took the audio that we played of this guy walking down the street, just going yeah. Machines Within, and they created uh, a song out of that. In other words, they. They looped in beats and, yeah. and they and they made a song out right. of it. This one right here, I don't know if, if on that one right there they actually sang it themselves or whether oh, they I, distorted I, it or not. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. But like this though. guy right here just submitted this also. So here's a little different take on machines within. <laughs> I mean, uh, thought just, I'd throw this going to be the folk version. On it. <laughs> um, big fan. Saw you got saw Tom and Indy. Um, and it was an amazing time. We kept singing Machines Within all day. So, um, <laughs> How do you sing just it? This... In my head, so I hope you enjoy. Oh, I was right. Machines Within, Machines Within, yeah, you got a gun to terminate a gun. Good. Machines Within, Machines Within, yeah, you got a gun to terminate a gun. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's by Kyle. Machines Within by Kyle. So good. That's, that's if impressive. The haters, if all the haters, if the haters, if all the haters, if the haters, if the haters, if all the haters. Wow. Impressive, man. I mean, this guy's inspiring people. I'm blown Machines away. Within. These two. How did I know it was going to be folk? I, I don't know. Nailed you, that. You, knew, you did nail that. Incredible. That's amazing. That's and, my pick. Oh, God. And they both work. Yeah. That's the thing. These guys found a way to make the song work. It's all about the producer, man. It's all about the you producer. You got to find your... Well, do you, do you guys put out an album once a year? No. We we should. Should. Let's do a Christmas album. This is my song. This is, uh... <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. I have another beat down for you. I'm trying to practice, practice my own song. This is my introduction to my song. This is my introduction <laughs> to my song. Here we go. I'll see you. It's like a guy stalling before an oral exam. Oh, wow. Kind of 
crazy. <laughs> this is uh, What's Jeans, What's Fake, DJ Meat Farts. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a talent. DJ Meat Farts has a good little sound system. Yeah. You know, somebody tweeted me. That T-16 is the it's gun all Terminator. in Terminator. Yeah, of course. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, so someone wrote in, my husband Stewart is an avid listener. Your mom's house, he listens while working. He came home the day Machines Within episode was played. <laughs> it's all he's been singing. The song is stuck in my head. I haven't listened to it. <laughs> it's hard to get down and dirty when Machines Within. Machines Within is all I'm hearing beforehand. As a previous writer submitted, that juggalo has tapped into something in my husband, and now I'm afraid of my husband is con- going to convert to juggaloism. <laughs> You guys are an awful influence to my 27-year-old husband. Much love, uh, Christy. Christy. It's uh, infected all of us. Machines yeah, Within machines has changed all of our lives. Yeah. If I do See? kill multiple people, that will be what I'm humming. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know something? That guy posted another video no! of a new song. No! Yes. Uh-oh. My introduction. <laughs> much love, no hate. Much we could come up for life. Wow. Are you ready for Halloween? I am the mass murderer of mayhem, mass murderer. My song is called The Mass Murder of the Grave. Oh, so the far, man. Mass murderer of the grave. The mass murderer of the grave. Of the grave as can be. Mass murderer of the grave as can be. Mass murder makes me. You know cool. what's great? In joke writing, you really got to make your premise clear. And that's what yep. he does with songs. Yep. He's he like really, the Chris Rock of yeah, rap. Yeah, he yep. really yeah. sets it up. Yep. <laughs> Here's what the song's about. Well, and for people that aren't watching, he has he has blood on his face and his clothes. I mean, we way to bury the lead out. on that. I know. We did leave that out because we're like, <laughs> yeah, kind of important. It's just got that on there. <laughs> There's a lot of blood on his face. And we didn't even mention it because we're like, this is, that fits. <laughs> Yeah, mass murder. I'm the mass yeah. murder to the grave. From the grave to the grave. Mass murder from the I like grave. It. See another mass pit. Mass from the grave. Yeah. yeah. Mass murder from the grave. The NRA is going to be defending this guy soon. Yeah. Mass murder from the grave. I'm chopping the verse. <laughs> mass murder makes me cool. Mass murder makes me cool. Yeah, mass murder makes me cool. Cool as can be. Much love, no hate. Much love, no hate. <laughs> It sounded like cool as candy. Oh my god! I mean, how <laughs> how is it possible this guy's two for two in the hit machine? Yeah, yeah. The grave. deep know. down and deep down in the pit, <laughs> in the grave, spiritually mass murder from the grave. I from would, the grave, spiritually from hell. And hell is chaos. Is chaos. Do you think he could do live? Do you think he'd do a live show? I think, or yeah, you, if you could book him as your opener, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, like, do you think he could handle it's it? It's a good five minutes. That's yeah. a solid then, five. Yeah, yeah for you'd sure. Kill yourself. Right? Try to get him to shut up once you're on stage, though. <laughs> The mass murder <laughs> of the grave. It's of good. the grave as can be. Somebody already sent it in. Mass murder of the grave. Wait, how did they hear it? Did you play this in a previous no. episode? Somebody found oh, this mass video makes me and made the song. So yeah. they sent us uh, the video uh, murder, and right. their version the of the song. But then next the grave, next episode, the grave, people the will have made mass much more much on that. Grave. Mass murder from it's the grave. Good. Mass murder from the grave. Here we go. Here we go. Mass murder from the grave. I'm dropping the verse. Mass murder makes me cool. Mass murder makes me cool. Yeah, mass murder makes me uh, cool. cool as, All right. cool as can be. Much love, no hate. Much love, he no is hate. Quite a lyricist. I'm the mass murder. That is a no chase with that song. Thank you, no chase. Thanks to everybody for sending in your uh, machines within remixes. Mm. Um, those were really good. Looking forward to she's retarded songs <laughs> next week. <laughs> um, they're really good. This guy does have a gift for the idea, though. I'm saying this juggalo guy. Yeah, there's he does have a gift of putting together like s- silly catch things, silly catchy maybe ideas. He could, he could write jingles, maybe. You know, mm. or he could write for the insane clown posse, maybe. You, I mean, you're that's quite a leap. Put him with the uh, Jimmy what's his dick and that. Oh, Jimmy Iovine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Did you watch that um, Defiant ones on HBO about uh, Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre? Like a four. No, part. no, it's no, no. Fantastic. Oh, is it good? I Especially heard the whole series is good. Especially if you love music, yeah. it's so good, man. Yeah, like, their story. Jimmy Havine's story is just bananas. Yeah, it's so it's 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 insane what like how he got into being a record producer. You know, he was like cleaning up a studio. Yeah, for a job like after hour, like just mopping. Right. And then they're like, "Do you know how to run a board?" Yeah. And he was like, "No." 
and a guy shows him how to run a board. That's amazing. And it's just like, and it leads like one thing into the next. And then he's sitting there like engineering a Springsteen album. Wow. And then uh, he tells the story about Oh, that's right. Yes. Springsteen talks about it in his book. It's wild, man. Yeah. And then how about, uh, I think it was, Iveen is Catholic and it was like an Easter where there, one of the guys was like, you need to come, we need you here today. He's like, it's Easter Sunday. And the guy was like, fucking come to the studio. Yeah. And his family was like, come on, you're not leaving on. And this, he's, he's young, he's like in his early 20s. Uh-huh. And he goes in and it's for, uh, <clears throat> it's a Lennon session. Wow. Yeah. So he's sitting there like, he's like, I just said, fuck Easter Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and just, he was. Uh, Are you kidding me? I would oh, say fuck amazing. Easter forever. He, did, he didn't yeah. know. He just went in. He was like, all right, you're telling me to come in. Yeah. Going in. yeah. Damn. It's well, wild. that's the thing I always tell young people now that. You hit a certain age and you talk to a lot of young people about, <laughs> True. you know, everybody wants advice and everybody want, and and it's it's hard because if you catch me on a bad day and this has happened, I've talked kids out of going into show business. <laughs> yeah, my friend Tom asked me to talk to his son, um, oh, no. and uh, he wanted to go into comedy writing, and I read his script and it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, and in this business, it's got to not just be good; it's got to be. Excellent, and it's got to be original. There has to be like, you know, like somebody, a spec script that gets traction in this town is like, somebody will take a Partridge Family episode from 1971, and then they'll put in uh, Isis as Kara. Like, you have to come up with shit that's crazy. Right, right, right. And then on top of it, be so well written. And and I just said to him, I go, look, man, you got a college degree. There's just, there's so many other things to do. And his father, (gasps) who's black, got really upset with me he's yeah. like dude what did you fucking tell my son and i was Aww. like i'm sorry man it was a bad day it was a bad day for yeah, me. yeah but i get that i totally get that mm-hmm. i did you know what i did once this is i, I mean i i don't think i did the wrong thing i, I picked the wrong time mm. was i told a comic who was booked by a club that was emceeing to not do so much crowd work oh what's and wrong I, with that well i told him because he was doing it every show yeah and um it was like Saturday between the first and late show, where I go look, man. I go, someone's gonna tell you, someone's gonna tell you this at some point, and like you, sh- you should know that like when you're on a headliner show like this, like you really don't. It shouldn't be up to you to just decide to do ten minutes of crap. Correct. And he was like, well, and I go, I'm, I'm not trying telling you this to, uh, to be rude, but like you're, you're basically dictating that like that's the tone. Of what they're about to see, you're not, you're actually making it. It's not even really fucking up my show, but it's like the middle act who on this hierarchy is definitely above you, is now like putting this thing where he's like has to adapt to your crowd work. Exactly. Not only that, now you, you and the feature act have to watch him every show to see, yeah. so you don't talk to the same people he's talked to. It's so I I did it in like a nice way, yeah. But man, the, he was shell shocked, and I couldn't tell right away. He went up there and bombed, mm. and then afterwards, like you know, I, I I didn't say much to him after his set, but after the show, he was like, Whoa. "I go, dude, like somebody was going to tell you that, and they might not have even been as nice about it as I was." Yeah, I said, "But you think you can just get on, like fucking Bill Burr's show and just be like, eh, I'm just going to do fucking crowd work." Yeah. I go, "You can't do that shit." Yeah, and he was like, "Really?" I go, "It's not like." This was like a showcase thing. You can do what you want. You know, there's 20 comics going up. Fine. I go, but like, this is not that show. This is a weekend show. And um, he was like, uh, I guess, you know, I just, um, I guess you telling me it like two minutes before I went up kind of threw me off. And I yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Well, you're like the big I, scary I, headliner. I, right. felt ba- I felt bad about the timing of it. You yeah. Know? I was like, yeah, I guess so. I know. We're, it's, it's powerful for a young comic to hear from a, you know, a legend. Yeah, yeah. Where you go, where you tell, especially if you tell them like right, if someone tells you something right yeah. before you go up, there was, I, I, I was. Well, I, I always do this thing when I'm on the road and I don't know when I started doing it, but every time the MC, and sometimes I, I've met the MC for two, enough to get my, my intro. Because yeah. if it's the first night, I just haven't spent time with him. Yeah. And uh, I always will go, he'll go, Greg Fitzsimmons. And then I come up, and then when he shakes your hand, when he walks off, I always go, thanks, faggot. And then I do my set, and yeah. I never talk about it. And yeah. then the next time I go up, I'll go, thanks, homo. Yeah. And I just keep, hey, thanks, cocksucker. And I do yeah. it each time. Yeah. And they, they, they never bring it up. And then this one guy comes up to me Saturday night between shows. He's like, he goes, did I do something? 
<laughs> because did I do? Did I go long? I keep thinking that I did that bit that's similar to yours. And is, did that make you mad? He he was going through right, what yeah. I what it could have been. I Imagine. go, no, dude, I do that to everybody. I go, I never, <laughs> I never imagined anybody would take it as anything but a joke. Of course, of course. I can imagine though, if you're that guy, the anxiety he probably had <laughs> I know, for he days. Didn't sleep. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. The next day he was probably like, I thought it was a good show, but. <laughs> Guy told me that Kevin was a He's calling me a faggot and stuff. Yeah. He goes, Is it because that guy, I was doing crowd work with that guy and I kind of like backed down and I thought that maybe that's why you kept calling me that. It's like, I didn't have the heart to tell him I didn't watch all of his sets. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Uh, that, that's the other one is when they, um, sometimes they're like Saturday, the MC will be like, Do you see the set? And I go, Not, mm. not once, not the whole week. <laughs> you guys are terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I just, I, I can't God. do it, man. I don't want to watch. It's hard because sometimes if I watch the feature and he's got a, he's got a bit that's really close to mine, it depresses me because I realize this kid is in Oklahoma and he's yeah. a feature and he, and we're thinking the same joke. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't even care if we repeat a similar joke. Like yeah. I used to watch so I didn't repeat a joke. And now I just figure it's more mm-hmm. detrimental to even know true that comedy is this easy right. and i think it's so hard <laughs> right right and then you're like that guy's not even that good i know <laughs> i know i've met that too yeah where you're like that's one of my that's a good that's an original thought of i know mine. i yeah. thought at the time yeah. like damn it i found one lightning yeah. in a bottle it's depressing i thought of one today actually when i was on the toilet and i wrote it on my phone which is um yelp is essentially like you can tell because I, I was yelping um, hot water heaters. We need a new hot water heater. And you just see the range of opinions that people can have about a piece of hardware. Mm. And that, you know, in yeah. any given case, a factory worker didn't put a nut on or didn't. And so it doesn't make the company evil. Right. It just means that there's a variance in quality of things. Sure. But it becomes like a Rorschach test <laughs> for the p- person that's doing the reviewing. Yeah. And it's always like, this hot water heater... <laughs> Makes me feel lonely. <laughs> and someone else is like, this thing gets me laid. And yeah, that's true. So I want to put really innocuous things on Yelp and just see how people, like, friendship. Yeah. See how people <laughs> rate. How do you Yelp friendship? How do you Yelp it? <laughs> Aww. That's, really that's true, because it is one big projection, your experience of something and, like, the particular form of rejection. And you can always perceived. look for the negative in something or you can yeah. look for the positive. Yeah. We've been, uh, by so the way, fun. we've emailed, we put out there a bunch of these questions that originally we put out, I think, like, how do what blind people know when they're done wiping? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then blind people would write in and tell us, or like, how do, uh, how do deaf people wake up in the morning? Uh-huh. And then last week we asked about how do cops... It's been a lot of dumb questions, <laughs> yeah. Greg, just so you know. How do cops um, handcuff a one-arm guy, like when they have a one-arm guy? <laughs> Here's your answer. Here we go. We got the answer. <laughs> hey, mommies, I'm a police officer on the East Coast. I'm explaining to you how to cuff a one arm perp. First option is to cut off one hand and put the other uh, cuff, cuff off. Cuff off one hand, put the other cuff on a belt loop on the opposite side oh. of their jeans. If they're foolishly not wearing their jeans high and tight, <laughs> then they just get cuffed to a stationary, immovable object. Thanks, wow. Rim. Oh. And the Canadian answer, I didn't know we had uh, a different answer there. Is but you just hold their hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the police, okay, on your recent pod, I heard you asked police how to handcuff someone with one, one hand. I'm a police officer in Canada and recently helped arrest a one-handed man. No way. The short answer to the question is, we can't. <laughs> one would assume that you could just cuff his one hand directly to his ankle, but... <laughs> <laughs> department policy <laughs> specifically prohibits this because it is considered hog tying <laughs> and can cause fat people with respiratory <laughs> problems to stop breathing. We are issued nylon re- leg restraints. However, they are useless if the arrested person if the arrested person is also is not handcuffed because they can just bend over and take them off. <laughs> the only restraints that we consider acceptable are the metal shackles that would cut his cuff his hand to the front and have a, a long chain reaching around yeah. down to the ankles. They are loosely cuffed together. Patrol cops don't carry shackles, so we just shoved him into the back of the van. <laughs> Hope this helps, and thanks for the great podcast. Justin, well, thank you both, Brim wow. and Justin, for the- Imagine that being one-armed and overweight. Oh, oh. God. Like it couldn't get worse. No, yeah, really. Man. And committing crimes. You're just like, being, and you're arrested. Just like, your life is just shit. You know, like you're in jail. You're fat and you yeah. got one arm. Yeah, Fuck. I was watching Trudeau on the internet. You know, there. You know that Canadian band, the Tragically Hip. Yeah, it's like Canada's pride, right? And the lead singer died, 
And here's like sweet ass Trudeau crying about this lead singer. Did you see him by Just any chance? Just when women couldn't love him anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was like, this guy was like our national treasure. And I was like, imagine if Donald Trump, like our stupid president, but like, a bunch of faggots crying about some <laughs> yeah, band. Right. Get it together. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, what a difference. And uh, I know. He's got a, military guys go down and he doesn't even take it seriously. <laughs> I see that thing this um, this morning. So brutal. Where the oh, widow God. of the the of the soldier that died mm. was on like Good Morning America, and she was like, "Yeah, that that account that Frederica Wilson gave of how the president spoke is spot on. That's what oh my God." And he and she goes, "What made me really sad was that he he couldn't remember my husband's name during uh. the call, and he immediately tweeted." I spoke to her, and I never hesitated about her, his name from the very beginning. Like, he tweeted that immediately. Yeah. Oh, like, boy. Uh, the amazing thing is there was a witness to the first call. <laughs> so, number one, what's the agenda of a fallen soldier's parent to lie about the, right. the president of the United States? Uh, right. And then you've got corroboration from a congresswoman, not yeah. just Johnny, yeah. you know, yeah. shithead in the back of the van. Like, yeah. No, for this woman, she was on the call. It was speakerphone. Her aunt, her uncle, the congresswoman, and the driver. Yeah. So five people. Yeah. And she's and she's. He's like, like nope. And he's like, that's not what happened. No. But he's just really into lies. that. Just yeah, lies. Yeah. Just he's. Yeah. Really he's into crazy. That. Wow. Yeah. Why would it's true? That's not even your priority to call out the president at that moment. Well, and it all know? started because he was taking shots at Obama, saying that. I he didn't used to call. Right. Meanwhile, Obama called every one of them, followed up with a letter, oh, and boy. usually called back six months later. Oh, so wow. why go after? First of all, it's like a it's like a lawyer says: don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. Don't attack Obama on something that you don't know the answer to. Yeah, especially when you're actually guilty of it yourself. Yeah. Well, he's a sociopath. It's crazy. He is to, it's banana. Should just ban so ban Trump talk from all podcasts. Oh man, let's yeah. hear it. Let's change it. We got it. We got it. Oh. This dental update <laughs> is brought to you by Quip. Q U I P. You don't need a big expensive toothbrush to get the oral care you need. Get the same refreshing clean with something simpler that'll give you the most, the best brushing experience you've ever had. Mm. The words exciting and toothbrush mm. have literally never been used in the same sentence until now. Introducing Quip, the new company that's refreshing the way people brush their teeth. Quip is an electric toothbrush that packs premium vibration and timer features into an ultra slim design that's half the cost of bulkier brushes. It's basically like Apple designed a toothbrush, but without the big price tag. You have to see it and brush with it to experience it yourself. You can even subscribe to receive new brush heads on a dentist recommended three month plan for just $5 a month, yeah. including awesome. free shipping. Quip is backed by leading dentists and was named as one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2016. They won a 2016 GQ Grooming Award and made it on Oprah's 2017 New Year's O-List. Quip starts at just $25. That is a fraction of what these other electric toothbrushes go for. Right now, go to Quip, getquip.com, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash mom to get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash mom. G E T Q U I P dot com slash M O M. Thank you, Quip. So, Greg, we're big dental fans here. We like knowing what's going on inside people's mouths. I'd like to know have you been to the dentist recently? Do you brush and fl floss recently? See, the wisdom tooth is not here. Yeah. Mm. Got it out five days ago. <gasps> five days ago? <gasps> wow. Five days ago. Story. I well, just saw story. you then. Yeah, I think it was that day. No. Yeah. What? Wait, yeah. What? Later? It didn't bother me. Didn't bother me. Wait, before we get to me? the detail of this, how are you a regular? Like, are are you good at oral care? Do you floss? And I floss every oh, day. Thank okay. God. Um, because I've got a couple of niches yep. in between my molars that yep. just they just fill up. I eat yep. anything. Yep. I've got yep. something in those in those yep. spots. It drives me crazy. 
And so I love the little handheld flossing I devices. I don't like those. I don't, they don't I like those. For me. I, I like those. Like them. I keep those in my bag, and then I floss every night. I brush at least three times a day. I'm consumed with having bad breath. Because when people have bad breath, I can't hang out with them anymore. Dude, it's ruined a few like people that I want to hang out with. Yes. It's all I think about, yes. their breath. One of them, like I like a friend, and I'm just like, I don't know, it's weird. Like I can't. I bet if we both wrote down three names of comedians <laughs> no. with bad breath, they would cross over. I bet I oh, bet at no. least one would. Let's do that. Okay. When we're off the air. Um, so uh, anyway, so I go in and I was feeling this pain when I'd bite on the right side of my mouth. And so I went in and the, and, and I swore. And how often like, do you go to Dennis? Do you go regularly? Yeah, I go once a year. Okay, okay. And, uh, oh, I take my teeth very seriously. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's very you'd good. be surprised because I only ask because of the range of ants. Like, some people come in here or they'll email in and they'll be like, haven't been to the dentist in 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And then they go, because you guys talk about it all the time, I just decided to go. And we get the full range. Some people are like, yeah. I had 26 cavities. Right. And some people are like, you wouldn't believe it. I haven't been in 10 years. Nothing. Yeah. I'm fine. Right. So, anyway, I have very hard teeth. I didn't get a lot of cavities in my life. My mom's got hard teeth. We don't get cavities. Wow. They're very white. Is that a natural? I don't yeah, know. I use toothbrush with the whitener in it. Maybe that's hit me, it. Hit me you with a smile. Hit me with like a bleach? 10. Oh, yeah. Wow. This that's... one's fake. This got knocked out. <sighs> Oof. And, uh, okay. and they, they put it in, and that was when I was 15, and it's still going strong. Wow. wow. Isn't that amazing? They that can put a amazing. crown on that lasts that long? Now, what about veneer work, porcelain? No, nothing like n- that. No bondings of any no kind? Bondings, wow. No bondings, no. So nice. you're... You're feeling a pain, though. So I'm feeling a pain when I bite, and I'm convinced it's my second molar, Mm -hmm. top uh, uh, right. And so I go in, and the guy uh, takes takes, uh, like a Q-tip, and he says, bite down. And he keeps biting down, and I'm not feeling the pain. And he keeps going, and then he goes back to the wisdom tooth, and I bite on that, and there's the pain. And so it was like this phantom thing where I thought it was this tooth, but it was the other one. Yeah, yeah. So then he goes, all right, well, you know, we can... We can, uh, he says, he, I think it's cracked, he said. And so, Oof. because I, I do have filling in that one. Yeah. And so the wall of it was too thin. So he goes, all right, we're going to pull it next week. And so I go home. And then that week, I'm chewing. And all of a sudden, I chew on something hard. And it was the outside piece of the wisdom tooth had fallen off. Ugh. And I crunched down. And here's the amazing, ah! amazing thing about the human tooth uh, dental system. You will... Be biting full speed. What is that? Twenty miles an hour each yeah, bite. Sure. And then if something is in there that's hard, your teeth stop in a nanomillimeter. Yeah. yeah. Before crushing down, isn't that incredible? Yeah. So you're just, yeah. 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 And, and it, it just, just stops. Yeah. And Even so, when you're fat, it stops. <laughs> yeah. <That's> true. <laughs> and so, uh, so I went in, and he uh, he went in to pull it out, and he shot me with the Novocaine. And all I'm asking is, in advance, I'm like, so can I get like uh, barbiturates or whatever? Can I, yeah. <laughs> can I get some opioids? Yeah. And he's like, I don't think you'll really need it. And I'm going, you know, I'm pretty pain sensitive and, and I'm really not, but uh, I want to get them and give them to my friends. <laughs> and so uh, and so he goes in and he's like, gives me the penicillin shot. and the, Not penicillin, the- uh, The numbing thing, right? The, the, yeah. um, Novocaine. Novocaine. Or... And, then, and then he's picking, he's poking around and then all of a sudden- he holds it in front of me. It, it took like three <gasps> minutes. Uh. He just popped it right out and then, um, you know, gave me some gauze to chew on. And I, I did three shows that night. Oh, my what? God. With the gauze in my mouth. Oh, my three God. Shows here? In right. Here in L.A. And then, I, and then I went out the next day. I took the gauze, you know, I had the gauze out overnight. The next day I was, I was fine and I haven't had any pain. Some people get wisdom teeth out. And for whatever reason, it's yeah. oh, it's a bleeds and you know it gets I, infected, and they have pain for like oh, I two had weeks. All four at they once weaved done. Some, they, back then when I when I had mine taken out, they weaved in some cloth that had Ugh. a painkiller uh, in it, oh, but it okay. had a um, clove clover clove, clove, clove yes flavor. disgusting, oh. and I I absolutely cannot stand it. Yeah. So I was driving around like oh, and uh, tasting. The clove. This, the clove taste. Yeah. And I had to, I called and I was like, I, you have to put something else in. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to be not, I'm going to throw up. Every, yeah. So I had to go in. They had to weave it back oh. out. Oh. 
put another one in. Wow. I never, I've never heard this story. 12 years and I, I never knew I this about your dental history, Tom. I know. Well, you, you always get something exciting and fun <laughs> with a dental update. Yeah. So now- Oh, you do a dental update on every episode? Not every episode, <laughs> no. but it's, uh, we've probably done, I don't know, 50 of I mean, wow. we, we like to do, it's funny, like we, we aligned with this company where we're both, they're like trying to make- oral care more a part of the conversation uh-huh. and we naturally did this been doing this for years like we just bring it up because i think we're just no i don't know it started and no it started as a joke it was it started in, as a joke at red band's house because yes. i had i uh, put the veneer stuff or some dental work done no i had a crown replaced my point is that and it was been, so boring to talk about on the podcast yeah. that we made it a segment we made it, it was a the segment. stupidest thing anybody could talk but about then it became dental a work. point of fascination yeah in other yeah. words like and it really is interesting to hear people's take on it. like it's it's so extreme it's, there are people who come sit here and are like don't brush don't do anything <laughs> don't never. and you're like what yeah. it's, it's just i don't know it's like one of those things that you take for granted that someone's probably going to take care of it and a well lot and it is don't. like old people one of the first things they'll tell you is take care of your teeth yeah because when you get old and that shit starts popping out yeah. and you're in pain and- i uh, i've asked i always ask whenever i go to any type of medical professional as soon as you get that rapport going with like the nurse, I'm always like, "Tell me some wild shit." Like, what? What? And they told me that like, I go, "What's the craziest thing you see here in the dentist's office?" And they're always like, "Oh, it's old people who have neglected their oh, teeth completely." It smells bad when they, they said clean that them. like, you know, some of them will tilt their head back, Ugh. and there's just food packed in oh. in the holes <laughs> and in between. And I'm like, and the smell, they're like, "It's not describable smell. It's a, it's the most nauseating thing you've ever seen." And you got to get in, and then the dentist assistant has to get in there with the floss and floss it all out. Oh, <laughs> it's so gnarly. Being a dental yeah. hygienist, could oh, you even imagine the smells yeah. and the And you're sights. working for a suicidal boss, number yeah. one suicide yes. rate. Yeah. Why do they want to kill themselves? Because so it's mon- monotonous. Because no one work. wants to be there. And it's oh, monotonous. Right. And people yeah. are afraid when they They're get afraid. there. Right? They're afraid. Yeah. I mean, I catch myself in the chair yeah. and I go, oh my God, every muscle in my body is tensed right now. Right, right. And they pick up on that. Yeah. As opposed to being a comedian where, wh- how fucking great is our job? People come in, <laughs> they drink, they relax, yeah. they and and it's also like, I was thinking about this, like, we're not that good. Right. What, what we do is <laughs> not that good because right. we learn over time to be calm and act like we know what we're doing. But the truth is, those two or three hundred people are sitting there with an agenda. Yeah. They are there to laugh. It's like when you go to a, a, yeah. a sad movie, you're there to cry. Yeah. I don't cry. When I go to a sad movie, I cry. Right. So when I go to a comedy show, it doesn't matter how funny the person is. I paid, you know, whatever they're paying to get in, 20 right. bucks, 25 bucks and two drinks. They're fucking laughing. Right, right. Maybe. But then again, there's the the I dare you to make me laugh people too. Yeah, but that's they're not like, most of them. But that's not watching, most. But if they're watching your special or something. Oh, that's like, different. Ah, someone On said TV, it's Fuck different. You. Yeah. yeah. And then it's a challenge. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the best is when you, you, you're getting these now, Different too. Different dynamic. Uh, the emails that I get emails like, I pressed play on your <laughs> on your special knowing that it would suck. And you're like, <laughs> and you're like cool. And then they're like, I got to admit, yeah. I did laugh. Yeah. And I was totally not expecting to. <laughs> You're yeah. not you're not as shitty as I thought you would be. Yeah. And you're like, that's a very nice, a nice email, compliment. man. Thank and you. you know, they think that they're being clever. Yeah. But it really is so annoying. It's so annoying. Those are emails. Yeah. Or after shows, when someone will come up to go, hey, you weren't that bad. It's like, yeah. just walk. Just, just fucking walk yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. I always, um, the one that I always tell is like the, uh, the pretty, like they're like, you're pretty funny. And you're like, would you, would you honestly walk up to another human being and qualify a compliment like that? Yeah. Like, would you approach a woman and be like, yeah, you know, you're, you're not bad looking. Yeah. You know, it's like like the, the the way that you're saying that is such a shitty tone to say like Well it means funny. that that guy probably sees himself as the funniest guy in his office uh, and he right. can't give up the alpha status to That's you. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I never I never thought of it that way. So There's a lot of alpha. Yeah. I mean, we're assuming alpha status and it's the same for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah. walking in and you're saying that's why women do one of the many theories why women are, you know, there's that thing of like women aren't funny and it's all, it's like, well, no, it's that you won't give over. The way I just described people walking into a club and sitting down and yeah. giving over, I think there's a criteria for who they will give it over to Absolutely. as well. And for men, they 100%. don't they don't want to give up their alpha status. Yeah, it's a position of power to, to hold a microphone and to be like, you're listening to me for the next yeah. hour of your life. Yeah. And also... Uh, 
women aren't allowed to be loud, vulgar, aggressive. It's societally frowned upon yeah. for a woman to assume assert that kind of power. Yeah, it's, it's not so attractive. Funny, it's to not sexually see attractive. <laughs> how threatened men are um, in all aspects. So, like on social media, I, I I was thinking about like all the shit talking, like all the hate. It's all dudes, and I yeah. probably have a more obviously skew more male followers, but like all the fucking hate. All the shit talking, it's all guys. Yeah. It's all guys. It's like unprompted. They're just pushing their issues onto you. Yeah. You know? It's like whatever they're attacking you for, sometimes it's like, oh, you know, you have this uh, nice fucking shirt, asshole. Would you, <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. You know? Or it's like, yeah, you, you think you're so fucking funny. What about some guy wrote me, like I, I did some sarcastic posts and he was like, easy to say when you have success and your wife has makes money and blah blah blah. I'm like, Dude, yeah, this is right. A Instagram post, You're right? I'm just joking. Although about. when a woman criticizes me, she's almost always dead on. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that thing you said. It was actually kind of racist. You yeah. go, yeah. Now that I think about it, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's true. I get a lot of females criticizing me now from the special. Yeah. It's a lot of female on female hate. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Interesting. Dudes. Maybe it's that the sexes feel more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Criticizing their own. Yeah, right? totally. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Because guy, the, the what I get from guys is like I hate, I usually hate uh, female comics, but you're funny like a guy is funny. And mm. then I'm like, thanks. I, th- yeah. I think. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think, know. Yeah. You're not like every <laughs> other dumb broad out there. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Wow, what a compliment. Yeah. By the way, did you pick up on this uh, the David Cross? thing did you hear about this or read about it what happened how he was accused of being racist but like in a tweet oh um, i saw that there was uh, an asian uh comic. comedic actress yeah. let's yeah. not even say her name i don't want to give this person any thunder well i mean it. it's a known story right? i think that you know david cross is his whole sensibility is ironic yeah, Every, i mean it's like sarah silverman yeah. Yeah. to call anything she says is racist is like Stupid. well then you don't get what this person's doing that's what i thought too man and, and the other thing that i I, I want to say, like, yeah, we have to give some sense. I mean, it's literally like me calling that guy faggot as being homophobic. Right, right, When I right. say to the MC, yeah. fag- like, that's literally how out of context that that's, would be that's for per- David Cross. So th- for the story for people to know is that the pers- the comedic actress was, I think I think it was at a bar in on location before shooting a movie, is, is how I oh, understood okay. it. And, like, people are getting together at the bar, uh-huh. and that he approached... And she said that he was like, um, he said something to her and she was like stunned by what she, yeah. he, he made fun of her pants or something. Yeah. And then he was like, you don't want to speak English? Uh, uh, ching chong, yeah. ching chong. <laughs> and then challenged her to a karate fight. And I was like, yeah, I, I, you know, I just thought like, but if you're, cause you're a com, if the person who's saying it was, is a comedian. Yeah. It's like, don't you think that like, if you know David Cross, that he is actually, Play, like playing the part of that stupid person right. in an improvisational moment. Right. Like that's how, I was like, wouldn't that be like automatic? It's that a compliment he would, that he would think that you'd be okay with it. Right. Yeah, right. Of course. right. A, a hundred percent, yeah. Um, and I just felt like, I don't know, I mean, I'm not Asian, so I don't have the right to like say whether or not it's offensive, but I'm like, if, but I am a comic, and I'm like, yeah, like if if he came up to me and started pl- like doing what David Cross does and like jumping into like a character and insulting me, like that's supposed to be the fun thing that you're like, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Like you're, yeah, yes. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go along with it. Sure. And to recount it 10 years later and be like, ah, oh, that was so painful. It just sounded like, I was like, Are you oh, serious? it's so weak. I mean, well, that's the problem now with the whole me too pound sign, me too hashtag. Yeah. Is that, it's so undefined and it's such an excuse for anybody to just bitch about feeling slighted at some point. Feeling slighted and being sexually harassed are very different things. Yeah. Well, or, I, raci- or racially harassed. I mean, the yeah. whole problem is the non-specificity. Specificity. Mm-hmm. Specificity. Yeah. For instance, if you're going to call someone a racist and you're going to do it on Twitter in 150 characters or less, like, is that really fair? To put someone on blast in two sentences? The answer is no. Yeah, unless it's stupid. There, it was like it's not blatant fair. racism. You know, like to tell that story, like we met at the bar before, like you know, as a like as a cast, and then like t- to take all the nuance out of the conversation. Yeah, it's, it's not fair. And then be like, fair. he was racist to me. Well, it's also a misuse of the word racist because racism is the 
the the the person who has the power using that power to objectify or oppress the person uh, of another race. Oh. Yeah, the it, lesser race. Geez. The lesser race. Yeah, yeah. The superior race right. acting superior, right. basically, is a crime. Yeah. We earned it. Yeah. Look at we us. only fucked within our thin gene pool for thousands of years <laughs> so we could be better. Right. But I mean but I mean racism is the acting out of a prejudice. Yeah. So just making an obnoxious even say say David Cross was in, in for an, uh, of the most liberal outspokenly you know democratic guy if he say this in one moment of his life decided to be a racist he didn't do anything about it he didn't keep her from Crazy. getting in a movie or on right. stage so and there's think, no crime and i think he is one of the most liberal uh, he is like really he and his wife I've followed them on Instagram guys. yeah he's sweet I doubt that and with the hashtag me too thing I'd like to know what the stories are I, I feel like if it, if it's not specific it's like it, what's what is how is this helping people yeah. ching sharing, ching chong, ching there you go because in sharing stories that's how people help each other Do you that's know what an I mean? Asian woman by the way yeah oh, is it yeah that's making an Asian fun woman. of another Asian well she was no she this that's woman right. is actually talking about how how she said that like uh, that she'll fight your ass even though uh, I'll let her say it. So, sure. hey, shit without them eyelashes on that makeup on a bitch wear. I'm still so cute as shit. Get the fuck up out of here. I might look a little bit more ching chong ching chong. But don't get me fucked up, bitch. I'm still hood as shit and we'll fuck your ass up. Okay, you wanna fuck with my money, huh? You wanna fuck with my money? <laughs> oh, I fucking love that. Yeah, yeah. So she's <laughs> that's like, a character. Yeah, she's a, she's a real hood ass chick, right? What there. does she look like? She's um, I guess I think was she. Chinese, Vietnamese. Yeah, and, um, she was an Asian and, lady. And, and but she like uh from New York and talks like like super ghetto. Yeah. You wanna fuck and, with my uh, mic? And then goes she was like, Oh, I might look like I'll ching chong, but I'll fuck your ass up. That's how she was You wanna fuck with my mai? You wanna fuck with me, Yeah. You wanna fuck I thought it was you wanna fuck with me, me? Do you wanna she fuck says, with me, man? Me me. Oh me. You wanna fuck with my mai, huh? Mai mai. Oh my mai? Oh, mai yeah. mai. So that's, that's Vietnamese, right? You wanna fuck with yeah. me? You wanna fuck with my mai, huh? Yeah, May May. I don't May May is her name. I don't know. Come mm. on, mm. fuck my May May. Yeah, the uh, Vietnamese gangs are badass. They were notorious <laughs> when they started coming over here in like the nineties. I forget why there was like an influx of Vietnamese gangs, and uh, the cops would talk about how, you know, it all started with like, you know, the Italian mobsters, right? And that mafia where really they just they killed other fat guys. There yeah. wasn't there wasn't too much. And then along came like, um, you know, uh, inner city Crips and Bloods, and they were killing other bystanders. Got killed a lot, but then these Vietnamese gangs came along, and they said these motherfuckers were scarier than any of the other gangs because these guys would just bla- fucking open fire. Oof. There would there was all kinds of hits going on, and and they said they were they were really fucking tough. And then of course the Russians came. Oof, yeah, that, savages. That, that that just like trumped everyone. And then mm-hmm. you know, I remember when we were kids. Like the big thing when I was growing up, my mother's Peruvian is we would always ref- everyone would refer to the Colombians as like the most savage. Yeah. you know, because of like the cartels and they're like they're so violent. And then they were definitely. I mean, they look like fucking kindergartners next to the Mexican cartels. Yeah, there's so much way more savagery in the Mexican cartels. Like fucking will kill a whole kid, like a school full of kids and all the teachers and stab notes into them so that when the cops come, the notes are stabbed into the kids' dead bodies. No oh, shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah, That's because terrible. like they were trying to oppress the cartel in that area. Wow. Crazy shit like that, you know? It's like in... Um, Way, like, but I'm saying like left over. Yeah. You know? What, what, well, it's like, remember Apocalypse Now? When, when at the end he's talking about how the Americans would send uh, medical units in to try to treat the Vietnamese who had, I forget what disease they had, but they gave them shots of penicillin. And then the warlords would come in and they would chop off the children's arms that oh, got the God. shot. And then that's when Marlon Brando said, the horror. The horror. The horror. Oh, Jesus Damn Christ. It. Well, thanks, Greg. Ching tong, ching tong. <laughs> That's ching better. Tong, ching tong, <laughs> Someone made a song out of that. See? That's a good song, actually. That's a, it is a good song. Ambition. <laughs> 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 
I'll be like, oh, I'm a bad mother because I make crazy ass videos. She don't care about nothing but her fucking nut. So whatever, come on little side bitch, let's go get you some self-respect and dignity in a life. Don't accidentally stick your dick in the wrong hole, stick your dick in the wrong hole. My mommy. Stick your dick in the wrong hole, stick your dick in the wrong hole. My mommy. Stick your dick in the wrong hole, stick your dick in the wrong hole. My mommy. Dick in the wrong hole, dick in the wrong hole. You remember, uh, this song is great. Yeah, it's really good. I can't stand when somebody comment under one of my video. Is she high? No, Mudafuka, I am blessed. <laughs> Mudafuka. <laughs> uh, so this guy last week tried to tell us to tell the internet that if you want to feel horny, you should take t- <laughs> 10 to 12 Benadryl. <laughs> You're gonna and die smoking. when you see this one. Um, Jesus you're gonna die if you Christ. take twelve Benadryl. Dude, Dude that's course. what we thought. Um, Crazy see. person. Yeah, he, he's like, you want to be horny? <laughs> take ten to twelve Benadryl. Yeah. That alone would send me to the hospital. <laughs> Before you have sex, <laughs> if you want to be horny for two or three hours, like you've never been in your life, and you have access to marijuana too, good weed. Listen to me. Okay. <laughs> it's to me. True weed alone can get you really hornier than normal, but Benadryl, take about 10, 12 Benadryl before you want to have your sexual fun with your partner or whatever you do or masturbate, all right? Okay. So, okay. this guy. I'm thinking it's the latter with yeah. him. <laughs> this guy. What's he huffing in the balloon? Uh, he's, he's, he's real. Uh, he's, they send him some more videos of him. So <laughs> He's going for it. He's really going for it. But this, this person <laughs> says. Going for it. That's one way of putting it. I heard the most recent podcast I needed to share. When I was in <laughs> high school, somebody told me if you took a bunch of Benadryl, it would give you a pleasant high. I'm not sure what is wrong with that women's wrestling guy <laughs> because it was truly one of the worst, worst experiences of my life. In movies, they often show acid and mushrooms as terrifying, inducing terrifying visuals which they don't for most people unfortunately this is exactly what happened (laughs) my stomach felt like it was on fire (laughs) i could not tell what was real what wasn't i was talking to people i believed were there and i would look back and they were gone when i would walk into a different room i would think i was somewhere else on a different day oh my god towards the end i was chasing a tarantula around the room trying to kill it with a broom (laughs) Jesus. Wow. Considering this guy has done this a lot he must be a special kind of crazy keep your dosages low when experimenting with drugs or new masturbation techniques, Dr. Lee's. I bet he didn't sneeze once, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's the upside. That's the, that is the upside. Uh, always um, on the bright side, you. This. Uh, Could you imagine? Dude, this, I mean. This guy's fucked up. Well, can you I imagine mean, watching the video and then going, I'll try it? This. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, what is wow. he talking about? You can about? take this. See this? This is the string from his shorts. Uh, obviously it goes to my pants right but now (laughs) but but. pull as hard as you can to rip this apart okay pull as hard as you can you feel those magnets there's little (laughs) atomic magnets that make molecules and then molecules stick to other molecules no no they don't it's that strong (laughs) it's that's a magnet that's lots of little bitty magnets Uh, man yeah Uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he also turns out he's really pissed oh, off boy. at women in general. Oh, I, I yeah. know why. I was going to say, I mean, when I see a, a waste of human existence like that, yeah. and you think about how much work it took for his mommy to make him yeah. and, and care, and then you're Isn't like, this is what you're doing? You now? Yeah. This Plus, is what you're fucking doing with yeah. your life? You suck? All right. yeah. Well, all you women are the reason that I'm dying. I take fucking 30 Benadryl at once at night. 30? I fucking want to get horny and enjoy myself sexually without... And then there's the jealousy and rage issue I have over <laughs> even lesbians. I'm jealous of you even, so... Jeez. But you get to be hornier and grow up sexually and mature sexually because you've had real pussy in your face, and I haven't. I, I had to get watching the fucking videos on YouTube. Yeah. I spent thousands of dollars in my life on female wrestling, and little girls do that all the time, man. And post it on YouTube, and it's more fun, and it's free. But the fucking, it sucks the quality and everything else. Hey, wait, people, is he man, saying he watches America little girls so wrestle? No, right? I, I think he's saying he watches female wrestling, Yeah, and that any chick, woman... Can, do can that. just make that video. Her like mm. she can just grab her friend. Like we her. can get all the pussy in the world. He's yeah. saying, but he can't. So he's jealous. He's real pissed yeah. about it. No, that's true. He hates his mommy. His mommy was um, nice. Your to him. sexuality in America fucking sucks. 
What? These guys always talk about in America. In Have you ever left America? Inside of a woman. Is there a better that place for you? N- yeah. <laughs> in America. Yeah. It's America's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have a passport. He's he also, never left the town that he's no. from. He also thinks it's really stupid, like it's really lame to want to have traditional sex. Oh. And to like, oh. like. What? I have never in my life wanted to stick my dick inside of a woman and come. That is the stupidest, nastiest, dumbass thing I've ever. It, oh. To me, it's no different almost than having sex with a guy in the asshole, which is disgusting as fuck, too. <laughs> Option three is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Those are the holes. What's going on? What the fuck? I, I would never. Some my, my family's tried to get me to watch regular porn. My they call family it. has. Fuck you and your porn and your the way you make out and your stupid, boring, fucking bullshit. Yeah. Wow. Really sad. Mm. Fucking all of you are owned by your woman. You're all a bunch of fucking pieces of shit. Oh, God doesn't love you any what? of you anymore. What? You're fucked. Oh my goodness! How do you? Here know? I am on the planet with you, motherfucker. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Have a good day, motherfucker. Oh, that's what my mom used to say when oh, she threatened yeah. me. Oh yeah. Have a nice fucking day. Would she really? Yeah, she would like threaten me <laughs> and write letter. horrible letters really? to me, and then be like, "Have a nice fucking day." Whoa. It's a real crazy person's thing to do, yeah. I didn't realize Shit. that last yeah. one, by the way, is solidified the level of that dude's really. What do you think? Well, I mean, the you, 10 to 12 Benadryl is not you, a good sign. Yeah, did you uh, deny, doubt him? No, I, but I, uh, that would, the end there when he was like, fuck you, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, that's, that's How did usually, this guy not stumble onto meth at this point? I know, right? He's question. up to 30 Benadryl? Yeah. <laughs> 30. I think, I think the next step is meth. Yeah. I think that's the step before this. Like, that's an old step. <laughs> I 30 think Benadryl? Jeez. Isn't it hard to get Benadryl? Isn't that like a controlled substance? That's what now? I was I wondering. Know. Like Sudef, Sudafed is. Sudafrin's in there or whatever. Yeah. Have a nice fucking day. People make math. Day. You have, have a nice, nice fucking day. When I met her, you know everyone's always like, wait till you meet my mom. <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah. She was like, wait till you meet my mom. I'm like, <laughs> please. Yeah. And then we met at a restaurant and she was like, hello. <laughs> and then she's like, I was at Bloomingdale's and this fucking cunt saleswoman. And I was like, <laughs> I started to laugh so hard because I thought it was so funny. And she's like barely she's like barely registering me. She's like yeah. watching me laugh and she's like, I said, fuck you, you fucking bitch. And I was like, oh. Wow, oh, yeah. really? In a, in a restaurant. First first meeting. And Damn. this is in public. We yeah. were in a, a public restaurant, yeah. In a restaurant she would frequent and she would always get the back booth so that people couldn't hear her. Uh-huh. So she could really unleash. Yeah. yeah. And then Christina's looking when she was like, I told you. you. Yeah. <laughs> what are her views on race? Super. My mother was super racist. She would um, remember when she felt slighted by the yeah. Japanese. So we, we went to a sushi bar once, and they sat us, in her opinion, very close to the restroom, which not really, but she was too close to the toilet, and so she got mad at the waitress, and she was like, "This fucking gook bitch set me near the fucking toilet. Fuck you, fucking gook." And I was like, uh, "Um, <laughs> um." So then we like got up and stormed out, and I had to follow her. And I was like, "Something's wrong." That's I pretty, think wow. something's That's wrong. pretty intense. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, she was always ra- and my stepfather was Indian, and he was racist too. Ironically, they're both dead now but that's one of my favorite yeah like the psychology of like these fucking immigrants yeah. <laughs> like your indian step like immigrated yeah. at like yeah. 25 or 30 right. like a grown man yeah came to this country and is like we gotta put these border walls like he was like <laughs> yeah pro you know what i mean like he probably came yeah. in illegally no no he fought in our military he, oh he did he okay, got okay. In the military and he came in legally but he was a republican and he gave a lot of money to the republican party and therefore felt that he was kind of like you know, like a, like an, a white guy, yeah. By by money, and he kind of was like yeah. in this country, your economic status determines a lot, right, right. of how people perceive you. And he sure. was a baller, so yeah. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, he had pictures of the five last Republican presidents signed what? personally given to him because that's how much money he donated oh, wow. to the party. Yeah. yeah. Shit. What did he do for work? Hmm. Oh, really? I don't want to answer that. Oh. <laughs> um, a little bit, of, a little bit of everything, as yeah. they say. <laughs> A little, this, little, little bit of this, a little bit of that. It was little my, uh, shady, shady stuff. One of my friends growing up had a, uh, not that this means it, but his father was Dominican, and they, they, they were like, I was like, what does your dad do? They lived, they were very wealthy. And import-export. Import-export. That's another euphemism. Yeah. And then it's like yeah. four years later, it's like, <laughs> but what does he do specifically? Like, import-export. I'm like, uh-huh. could you tell me what he imports? Mostly importing. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, <laughs> like, he's just, In distribution. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, hmm, okay. That was it. That was the most you ever got. Spending yeah. the night at his house. Always, 
what do you do? Import, export? Like, yeah. Okay. Well, it's amazing because when you think about uh, World War II and the people that came over here, or even going back to you know, the turn of the 19th century when people came over here and they had nothing. And, and all of a sudden, like, you know, you got some guy who came over here, like, uh, you know, I was reading this book about the, the, uh, the famine in Ireland. And, like, people would come over here in, like, 1946 with, fuck, you know, zero. And all of a sudden, they went to college. And yeah. then they went to, got a doctor's license. Oh, it's bananas. And became wealthy. And it's like, I, I hope my kids, like, just break even. I hope that they can move out of the house at some point. Right, right. Yeah. Make enough money to live on their own. That's my that's my goal for my kids. Of yeah. course. Wait, can I ask I know, you right? a question though? Sidebar. Your son's going to. He's a he will. Can, he's a winner. Is he what? Your son's going to. He's the a way winner. you describe. Yeah, your son. he should be. Well, you never know. Sometimes kids peak in high school. Your daughter's gonna bring a black guy to live with her, but for your sure. son's gonna fucking definitely move on. Yeah, I'm expecting the black guy. We're already like, you know, putting hip hop stuff around the house. It's just a matter of time. Hip hop stuff around the house. <laughs> You're hanging gold chains on the wall and shit, so he's comfortable. Yeah. We've got some like, you know, some like uh, African elephant type statues, and <laughs> what what else do black people like? <laughs> we got cookbooks, dashikis. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Wait, so I have to ask you a question about the potato famine, yeah. right? That's what you're reading about in yeah. Ireland. Well, they're a fucking island. Why weren't they fishing and eating fish? We were fishing. We were growing a multitude of crops, but we were um, we were being held hostage by the British, who were who oh. were exporting ninety nine percent of our agriculture and then selling it to other countries, while we literally a million people starved. It was a genocide. Mm. We, they literally, you know, and so we were subsisting off the potatoes. Oh. And so when the potatoes went bad, they didn't give us any of the other food. We had giant um, uh, pigs, uh, a, a giant uh, a agricultural as well as livestock, all being exported. And the Brits oh. were like, fucking let them die. Let them die. Literally said, there are too many of them, let them die. Jeez. And this is, what, what years is this happening? This was like in the, the 1840s. Oh. Yeah. Well, the occupation oh, lasted yeah. for hundreds yeah. of years. Yeah. yeah. 1840s. No, the British, you talk about Nazi Germany, the British are way worse in terms of what they've done worldwide, oh. yeah. colonizing and, you know, slaughtering all kinds of native yeah. peoples. Oh, yeah. Like the Spanish, too. Spanish, are like my, my other half. They're yeah. fucking savages, man. Yeah. I remember, I still remember, I, I, I carried this with me, like those moments, those conversations. I was in this, I was in school in, in Madrid, like in college, taking yeah. a class, and they were like, how do you, um, when I write, the teacher, the professor wrote, you know, when I write United States, what is the first thing that comes to mind? And a, a Spanish student was like, imperialism. I'm like, yes. And world dominance and all that. And then like, what about Spain? And they said some other shit. And I was like, how about imperialism? Uh -huh. And he was like, excuse me? And I'm like, you have like 600 million people speak Spanish 2,600 miles away. Yeah. You think it's because they just like the language? Yeah. It's because you guys fucking... Fucked everybody. And, right. Yeah, you just went in there and just destroyed the place. The man. most ancient civilizations, the Aztecs mm -hmm. and the Incas, destroyed their temples and their everything, their their speech. They didn't allow them to speak their native language until no. it's it's Rape, gone. Great pillage took everything back. Yeah, yeah, and then all the like, gold. They're like, yep. you guys are the imperialists. I'm like, we learned it from you yeah learned by watching you, Dad. Right. Yeah. yeah, Dad. They took all that gold. Yes, man. It was all man. that gold in Central America, and they just carted. And the, and it's the the people in Mexico. They they didn't fucking know. Of course not. They were, the gold didn't mean anything to them. So next thing you know, they're hauling that shit out of the ground with a gun to their head. And anyway, this is this has gotten to be a very dark. I love it. Podcast. Yeah, I love it. We're on the brink of civil war in this country. And listen, <laughs> uh, we got to wrap things up. Um, Fitz Dog mm. Radio, Fitz Dog Podcast. No. You, the, the so the show. Airs on Sirius XM as well, right? Doesn't yeah, it? I have the Greg Fitzsimmons show, which has been on like ten years now on uh, Howard Stern's channel. Fucking it's amazing! It's actually the only other show on Stern's channel. Aww, That's crazy. Love point. It. Yeah. Um, so you have that. Plus, That's Mondays at uh, seven, five o'clock on the West Coast. So that'd be Close. XM 100? 101. 101. and then um, the podcast. You've been doing that for a while now. It's That's fantastic. Been like eight years. When's yeah. my episode airing? Um, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. I'm not sure. I think tomorrow. Um, yeah. And that's, By the time this airs. That's Fitz Dog. Yeah. Check out my episode. Fitz Dog Radio. 
and uh, fitzdog.com. And then I got some tour dates. Can let's I shout it. those of course, out? Of yep. course. All right. I will be going to, let's see, Spokane, Washington, November 2nd through the 4th. And then I will be in Atlanta, Georgia at the Punchline, uh, November 16th through, no, 17th through the 19th. The all new Atlanta. I know. What do you hear about it? I've heard good things. I've heard yeah. good things. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I like the owners. Um, Tempe Improv, December fourteen through one. seventeen, and then uh, and I think I may be adding some dates. So go to fitzdog dot com um, for more details. People don't even know, Tickets. and we say this. You know, we would say this. And it's uh, it's uncomfortable to say to the person. You're one of the best comedians yep. in the world. Yes. Oh, thank I've you, never, man. I've I've like I. You're somebody who I one hundred percent. If you're on stage. I want to watch, and then I feel badly about myself. Yes, me too. And then I wow. Go, yeah. yeah. And then I'm me like, too. you that really got to so get your, nice. Well, you're your so thoughtful. Joe Rogan and yeah. I were just talking about Greg on, on Joe's show last week whenever I did it. And you're so thoughtful, and you're so intelligent, and you're so funny, and it's hard to be all those things, and you're really, yeah. really great. And I would say this. You know, we'll always, Thank if somebody you. comes in here, we'll be like, you should go see their show. You know, you shouldn't go see all the shows we tell you to go yeah. see. <laughs> but, <laughs> But... We're that, full of shit. Yeah, yeah. Not Fitz Simmons is so good. If you love stand up comedy and you're in any of those cities, you should 100% get a ticket. He's, he's really one of the best. So go see him. It's it's awesome. Well, you guys are the best. That's very sweet. My head is very big right now. It, it, uh, incredible. Because it's so full of dreams. <laughs> and don't forget, as you go to bed tonight, machines within. Machines, machines within. within. Machines within. Uh, thanks for coming today, man. All right. Appreciate Thank it. You guys. Thank you. We got to run. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Girls and boys need to sit on different sides of the bus. Side to the bus. Side to the bus. My image, my image, my image. Side to the bus. Side to the bus. Side to the bus. Girls and boys need to sit on different sides of the bus. Martina now considers herself a black woman. A black woman. Ah! Ah! I don't want to watch you jerk now. I don't want to catch you and have that horrible, awkward moment. Big dog makes big shit. Small dog makes small shit. Always get small dog. Side to the bus. Side to the bus. <laughs> Side to the bus. Side to the bus. Side to the bus.